I'm just using a reference sometimes I you know I like I didn't speak sometimes I didn't make reference to um, um, other entities on the planet. Okay. Um and the I guess the use of our spirit our spiritual system against us. So when we talk about other entities, what are we talking about? Okay. So to be clear on that. Um, okay. When we speak about other entities, sometimes depending on the context of what I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about different things. I actually thought you were gonna go somewhere else with that. Um, I'm speaking about any any parasitical energy. Mm-hmm. Now that may be someone in our culture. Sometimes you go to different priests, quote unquote, or different practitioners, and when you walk through the door of their shrine, they see you as nothing but a power source. So in in essence, that is that is someone using your system against you. You know, um, but in the same instance, you have within the greater societal community, you have um, different esoteric and metaphysical practices that are used by the government. You know, um, judges, which is that's a part of the greater corporations. You know, the police, even down to the badges that they wear, the insignias on the badges. Okay, now of course we may root some of those things and say, well, those come from a Grecian understanding. But of course, you know, the Grecian understanding comes from a Kemetic understanding, and we know that the Yoruba migrated out of Kemet. So ultimately those things are being used against us. For instance, there's an, there's an Arabic word, which is actually a Bantu word, and that word is Sharif. And Sharif means Allah's enforcer. And the Sharif worked on the understanding of the six-pointed um, system of discipline, which eventually became the six-pointed star, which eventually became the sheriff star, that he, the badge that he wears. Okay, and the Sharif became the sheriff, you see. But because and legally, the sheriff is actually the only one in America who actually enforces the law. The police officers are agents who protect and serve administrative statutes. So they have nothing to do with the law, by law. Okay, so the only, when there's a problem and you need law enforcement, the only ones you really should be calling are the sheriffs. They're the only ones that are obligated by their oath to actually help you. Police are not obligated to help you. So now, now we know, of course, sheriffs do like some of the worst stuff. They kick people out of their homes, all kinds of take your car. But because when you see that badge and you see that name sheriff, there's something that cues into you genetically and bio spiritually where you say, I, I connect with this. This is this is OK for this to happen because this is God's enforcer. You know, so that's another example of using our sciences against us. And I mean, it, it, it goes so, so far and wide. So that's just another form of someone coming in and using, again, our understandings and the things that we've grown accustomed and familiar with over the ages and putting it in front of us and saying, this is good for you. Uh, very similar to like the food pyramid. You know, for us as indigenous people who are melanin dominant, there's nothing on that food pyramid that's pretty health, that's pretty much healthy for us. It's all that dairy, all that red meat. But because it's in the shape of a pyramid, you immediately say, this is okay. Because that symbol, that image, that geometry is something that's good for me. You know, so that's, that's a small um, example of that, you know, in terms of that. But um, now, because it's on different levels. Now, directly and straight out, do you have politics, politicians and people of influence going into Ifa shrines? Yes. Uh, some of them come into my shrine. Um, I, I would say almost as high up as you could imagine in the political structure. It's not something to like, mm-mm-mm. it's something to say, yeah, that makes sense. Why would you not do something that works unless you are of the culture of black America? <laughs> well, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, we love praying and we, we love our dancing and our hoping and we love going on lifelong pursuits to, pr- to prove that all of the greatest information in the world derives from our 
negotiations with nature. While there are other entities, parasitical entities, that will say, I don't care who invented it, just do it. Does it work? Do it. And because of that, they're able to create a certain stronghold footing in the world that we are still having a little struggle. Uh, uh, I've heard this before, right? But uh, you're like the second person that said this. And you, um, are there? Because we talk about we talk about the soul a lot, right? Sure. Uh, uh, as human beings, the souls. Right. And and I've heard of human beings who don't have souls. Right. Now. Who would that oh, like? How would you recognize somebody who doesn't have a soul? Oh, okay. You can listen to that show. Okay. <laughs> um, the reason I say that this came up recently, uh, I was at another. I don't know where I was. It was on a tour. We were in some state. I forget. I think it was. Te it was one of those non-black state like Texas. Like, <laughs> you know what he's doing here, type. And when people came and saw me, it was like, you know, I think it was Texas. Um, and I spoke on this and of course afterwards because there were like maybe two or three black people in that particular audience it was a packed room so you know they may not see another me for another two three years so I got to give it to them while I'm there you know I don't care with whatever you know I'm here to serve you know uh, that which empowers me ultimately this is a selfish work so um, I explained, I, I, I talked about that, and of course afterwards some people came up and was like, well, how do you identify that? So this is what it was. There was, uh, I was standing here, and there was one individual here, one individual here, and the other individual here. There was three of them. Two of them were together, and there was one who was you know, um, separate. But they all had the same exact question. It came up afterwards as I went after I left. So we were we were talking on it and um, or speaking on it rather. And um, we gotta pull up and don't worry about it. We're about to pull out some spaces in Um so in a simplistic sense, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you what I gave him at the end of the conversation, and then I'll work my way backwards because I gave him the easy one in the end. As I was sitting there communicating with these three individuals, I was struggling to communicate with two of them, and one of them, the communication was like it was real easy, like how I'm talking to you all right now. And what was happening is like as I was communicating with the two of them, I found myself constantly saying, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, do you, you get what I'm saying? And it was, I, I think so. I mean, is it like, uh, you know, because what, what it is is that people who are soulless are only created by our thought projection and energy that we give to them. So when they come in our presence, in order for them to exist in that presence, which is very difficult if you're vibrating at a certain frequency, Two things have to happen. One, you have to lower your frequency in order to accommodate them in that space. And two, you have to give them a part of your vital energy body, your, which we call in Europe, what we call the Ojiji, you, or, or some people call the aura. You have to send some of your aura to them to make them real. All this is happening in the middle of a conversation because uh, they're not actual uh, creations of the soul. They're not actual celestial creations. So what is happening, if they're only existing through your thought presence and living purely off of the ashe that they're able to borrow from different sources, then whenever they come around an individual, cheer time, whenever they come around an individual, what they're going to have to do is try to borrow some of that energy just to only exist for the moment. No different than a vampire. Okay, whereas when you're speaking to someone with a soul, you're feeding each other. I don't have to lower to level five so you can come up to level five. I don't have to come down from my 10. I can keep my energy, and in effect, it's kind of like sending energy 
to a plant or to a tree. You know, they actually, they give it back. It, it, you begin an exchange. Even if you hug a tree, if you're feeling depressed and you hug a tree, you'll start, you'll release your energy into the tree. But then what will happen is you'll start giving the tree energy while it's giving you energy. You're keeping each other alive. So there's an exchange. So when you're speaking to someone who does not possess what we can what we call a ka or a soul, um, you'll immediately feel uh, that you're almost struggling to make them authentic. And mm -hmm. in comedic culture, the word for authentic was ma'at. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that that was the word, because ma'at literally means authentic, but one of the reasons that is because that balance that occurs, that individual is not authentic. They're not really real. They're only real because you've excited, you've decided to acknowledge them as real. You've given them that favor. No different than if a spirit came in here or a high level spirit and called your name and said, Johan. You would really feel like, wow, I really, my life does have a purpose. I'm here for a reason. Because there is something orchestrated outside of me that is acknowledging me. So it gives you a certain thrust. <clears throat> Well, the same thing happens when those of us who have ME, or the breath of life, speak on, speak to, speak near. <laughs> <laughs> and individuals who, who are vibrating at that low uh, earth frequency. Okay, when they're only vibrating at the earth frequency, and we speak to them, we raise them up. <laughs> so you'll feel immediately like I'm struggling to connect, in a sense. Okay, um... So as I was talking to the three individuals, what it felt like, and what it, and I, I knew it even before they came over, but I'm just giving you like an example of like how it feels. It feels like nothing's there. You know, you like there's people standing there, but it just kind of feels like nothing's really there. Whereas like as I'm looking in the room now, I obviously see people, but then I feel other people with the people you know so the room is much more packed to me because i mean i could stand up here and talk why am i not up here it's not just because the camera on keep up behind you recording yet because i feel give people their personal space i feel the energies here because these energies have to speak to me look tell him this tell her that you see now people who don't feel that you'll find that when they speak to you, they get all up in your personal oh, space. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they want to tell, oh, those are nice beats. You ain't supposed to touch that. <laughs> you know, where you get those? Because <laughs> they have no understanding of that the, that auric body. They, the only understanding they have of that auric body is I want it. Mm. I need that in You know, so they'll touch your hair. What is yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I cut mine recently, but I always kept mine covered, like, you know, because I wasn't always so friendly, but I'd give you a quick chop. <laughs> you know, because um, when you're servicing other people, you can't let people mess you around like that, because now I go to do a reading, and my energy is body off, body is off, because I let people play in my head, mm -hmm. you know, similar to what Bob Marley was doing right before he got killed. But yeah, so that's one of the ways you know. You know, you'll you'll try to communicate and you'll feel like a emptiness there. You know, and people who do who are coming with that energy, you can connect. I feel like a strength. Um, there's an attraction. You know, it's an attraction. To to tag on to that, is it possible for individuals to mimic or pretend to because they either listen to your show mm -hmm. or they absorb some information, but to pretend to have that. To have a soul. To, yeah, to have to have to something to give. Through yeah. language, through practicing how to speak a certain way, to wearing the right look, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Everything they're doing is a pretense. Okay. Everything. Even down to walking on two feet. Mm -hmm. To not eating raw meat. To telling you... No, I don't copulate with little boys. Mm. Their whole moral structure and value is a pretense. It's all, they're, they're completely pretending that they are civilized cosmic beings and that they're not humans, that they're not mankind. So it goes even beyond the initiatives to, you know, go to the continent and get initiated and things like that and come back and show you or grow locks or whatever it is that we um, associate with 
someone who has higher elevation and awareness and conscious awareness, it goes so far beyond that. It's just their, their movement through the planet, pretending that I exist. I think, therefore, I am. No, not really. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, that's, that's certainly a part of it, you know, that mimicking. But we have to look at the mimicking at very base levels. You know, anything that's purporting to be mem, alf, num, woman, man, child, which you also call man. Uh, if you have to pretend to be as such, then certainly you are not. If you can be classified as mankind, then certainly you are not man. You know, it's like saying I'm Asiatic. I'm not Asian. I'm, I'm ick. I'm Jewish. <laughs> ick. I'm not really a Jew. I'm ish. Jewish. More ish. I'm not really practicing the precepts of the Moors, which come from Kemet, which align themselves with Yoruba thought. I'm more ish. You know, now I'm bringing Islam and everything else into it. So, um, yeah, it, it's that. But then it, it even starts before that. And that's really how you get caught. Because you walk to them and they speak. And you say, oh, because you speak and you stand on two feet, you must be like me. And the problem with that is because you never got to witness their gestation period. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you first encountered them, you just assumed it was you and maybe continental drifts and you came up with all these different theories as to why their vibration was so earthbound and why they needed you so much. Why you had to, you know, anybody ever get a chance to check out Quest for Fire? Yeah. You know, they quest, yeah. That was a deep movie. Ray Don Chong, I think it came out in 84. Ray Don Chong, it was the 80s, in the early 80s. Yeah, I think it was like 83, 84. Ray Don Chong, she was 18. So, you know, it was, yeah, like 83, 84. And um, Ron Perlman was in it. He played one of the, well, they all look the same, one of the cave guys. But um, Quest for Fire, I'm lying back. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> It outlines that um, that process pretty well. But again, if you're not able to witness someone's gestation process, the same thing like you said, can I come along and pretend, can I jump on the internet one day and just say I'm a Baba Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People do it. You know, if I'm not able to really prove from a communal sense of where and when my rites of passage began, you know, like I got initiated this day. And, you know, typically if anyone who's ever been to the continent for initiation, they don't know, I know we have some practitioners in here, the community sees you. It's not like here where we're in basements, you know, and it's a hidden type of thing. And, you know, at night, and you know, there you, you know, you might be walking through a village to go from the river to where you were. So everybody, oh, OK, it's an initiate, you know, so um, you can't come back from the river acting a fool. <laughs> you know, because it's like, no, no, I, I, I know who your father is, you know, or who your mother is. You can't do that. You know, <coughs> that has a lot to do with it. Uh, back to, like, when we were talking about the solar. So, like, how does that speak to, like, the what we understand of the cycle? Like, for instance, our spiritual cycle. Like, for instance, uh, I know that we, we come from our, our you know, our soul creates our spirit for us to be animated here on, on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. So now, how does that speak to that? Like, for instance, they don't have a soul. So, right. wait, so what created them? Or what created the, 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 uh, the energy that animates them? These conversations. <laughs> oh. I'm not saying to shut it down. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No, but it's, it's, it's the attention we give to them. So... When you give attention to something, wherever the mind goes, reality will follow. But the thing is that reality is now a product of thinking. Anything that's a product of thinking is transient. It passes. In our Yoruba culture, we have the ori ode. We have the ori, which is your consciousness, but the ode means the outer head. But what that specifies is speaking about the brain, the flesh brain. So you can create experiences from your flesh brain. For instance, when you have a thought, it creates a cell. There you go. Now you got an entity that was created from thought. But that cell is a microcosm of what can be rippled outward and even larger. So the more you give attention to that cell, or to that thought, the stronger and bigger it becomes. Now, we do it even, 
even in the sense when we're when we're not having amorous or affectionate thoughts about those those entities, because all they have to do is do something so horrific that all of our attention goes to them, like the Michael uh, Brown incident. You know, they'll shoot one of our children, they'll beat up one of our women, they'll shoot up a car on a turnpike or something like that, and now our thoughts are to them again. And this happens purposely so that way you will keep us alive. If you stop thinking about us, we, we cease to exist, we fade. Okay, because if you do not have a soul, that means you're not connected to source. I gotta use some corny new age terms now, but it's just to, to clarify. Connecting yourself to source, or Oludumare, right? The Ori is what connects you through. Okay, that is the, the, the breath of life, Emi. Again, remember at one point, everything was comprised of Emi. Everything was Emi. Air, divine breath. And Emi formed itself through Ashe into matter-dense objects. Okay? So, if I have Emi, and Olodumare has given me that Emi, and Olodumare is a defined expression from the actual source, not the source, but the first attempt of definition from the source. Can't get much higher than that because we couldn't understand the source anyway. So you might as well just stick with Olodumare, who we also can't understand. That's right. <laughs> so that's, it's, it's that deep, you know. Um, so if I have that and I possess that, that divine breath, that means I also have the potential and the ability to regenerate myself. Re coming from the, re means to go back or source. So I can generate myself from source. That's regeneration or even recreation. I, re, I can recreate myself or create myself again from source, right? If I do not have that, where will I get the energy to create myself again? I have to find source elements somewhere. The plants, the animals, the people. Wherever I can get something that represents source. Source is carbon, soot. Okay, melanin. So uh, there was a time, uh, there was a drug that was real popular in the 90s, melatonin. Okay, and they told us that melatonin came from um, animal, I'm sorry, uh, fruit skins that they were getting the melanin from it, from like plums and eggplants and dark part of fruit. fruit. I mean, you know, yeah, I saw you laughing because you're, you know where it came from. Right, and then all of a sudden we had all these missing children every five minutes. They were taking their pine nails out, you know. Uh, even the Masonic tradition is even a ritual that deals with that. It's called the gross, the gross festival ritual. And they literally eat pine nail organs. Um, so, in order to really connect to that type of energy or to be able to create yourself again, you have to go to someone who has it. So how do we keep them alive? We keep them alive. The happy-go-lucky um, Moors. Hey, I'm going to go through Europe and I'm going to give you the science of essential oils and music and all these different things that are going to not only civilize you, but align your chakras and teach you how to uh, be cleaner. You rub these essential oils on yourself. And then what their men did was, tell you what, all of these women who were taught these Moorish traditions, which you're now calling this wicked thing, we're going to kill you. Because it's witchcraft to clean your hands before you, you know, do something. Um, then you had here on this this space, uh, we had the happy-go-lucky Indian squanto. Okay? Because nature said, you guys won't last one winter. And here comes squanto. No, let me tell you how to catch fish and to grow corn from the great mother. You see? <coughs> You know, we're always given energy to keep entities yes. alive that yes. nature is phasing out. Mm. That's out. Okay. Now, we haven't officially, we were starting late because a lot of people were coming in late, so I just was taking some questions, um, just freestyling a little mm. bit. <laughs> <laughs> before people got here. So, uh, before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Plug. 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 Yeah, looking for a plug. Oh, all right. Well, you know, we're taking it back. I'm good. <laughs> taking it back home. <laughs> no, I'm good, Bob. Good things. Good things. Um, well, back in the days, I mean, if you wanted information, it usually was very uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, you would be inched up in somewhere, or if someone would give you like, well, back in the VHS tape. You know, like, yo, this tape I got, don't let it pop. 
<laughs> hey, even it's grainy, you can barely hear it. But I'm telling you, they're dropping some stuff. Dr. Ben is dropping it on this one. You know, so we just take it back to the days of, of really earning our information. You know, it's going to be a little high. Um, I'm going to share it really. Oh, I was supposed to answer your question about my teaching style. Well, no, no. I'm, there was no need anymore. So okay, cool. Perfect. They got it. All right. Cool. Um, so I'll just do that real quick because I'm not really. Uh, yeah, I don't really get off into the biography thing too much because you probably Googled me before you got here anyway. You didn't? You should have. You should have. <laughs> <laughs> what you walk into. <laughs> Who is your friend? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, it's really about whatever I present. If it connects to you, then I become whatever it is that I'm getting ready to tell you that I am. Okay. Um, and if it doesn't connect, then it's complete fallacy. You're not going to believe it anyway. Mm-hmm. So when I tell you that I'm a Baba Lao, that will only mean something based on what I share later. Okay, so um, I'm one who's been studying for a couple of decades now, and not just studying, but implementing and applying um, different modalities of healing and knowledge systems in order to help my community. I first began uh, early 90s uh, in, in prisons actually women's detention centers <clears throat> and I used to do workshops actually on music and it was uh, really kind of decoding and and using the metaphysics of, of music to really deal with rage to deal with anger and I did that for some years and I expanded out of there because at the time I was doing it I didn't know that people that that was an actual career you know so uh, it wasn't until I saw other people coming into the facility and getting these checks. I was like, wait, wait a minute, I thought we were all doing this for the love. You know? <laughs> so uh, I learned more, but it was good because it allowed me to expand into other arenas, and I started going into the public school system in New York, um, contracting, doing, teaching different programs from music to martial arts uh, to, to culture, um, almost anything you could think of, computers, uh, I, I taught at some, some place, form or fashion. My life purpose is to teach. So because my core reasoning and purpose for being on the planet is to teach, I can teach anything. Uh, that's just, that's, that's, my, that's my lane. That's right. Other stuff, I, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I can't mess with too much. But teaching, I'm there. So uh, I've spent many years as an educator, uh, not only working as a yeah, we got another student. She's ready for it. Yeah, okay, another one. We need more chairs. Okay. So many. So, um. So, you know, my, my uh, launch into this world of uh, service from a communal level uh, really began at a social level. It, I wasn't going into necessarily teaching uh, metaphysics and, and our culture from a spiritual perspective, but what I was doing was I was teaching our metaphysics and our occult sciences, but wrapping it into other programs. Okay, and that's how I was hooking a lot of people in. And uh, that organization I had initially doing that was very big, it was huge. And um, throughout that process, I was also going through various initiations, not only in the uh, Orisha tradition. My initial initiation was into the uh, mysteries of Ogun. And uh, if anyone's familiar with Ogun, who's familiar with Ogun? I know. We <laughs> 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 you know Ogun City. Y'all know that. <laughs> yeah, I felt that soon. I pulled that. I said, okay, who's my cigar? Okay. So, um, Ogun is the force of militancy, but not only militancy, Ogun is the acidic force of, of the cosmos. Ogun is the, the accountant for the cosmos of the Orisha. He breaks everything down to little bitty pieces and then he recycles it and uses it for something else. Ogun is, um, is where we get our understanding of um, diplomacy where we get our understanding of patience and full-on, all-out uh, expression of ashe and virility. 
Okay, um, he's also his other things too. When you start studying in Risha, you'll find that a lot of things overlap. So one will say, well, Goon is the most intelligent in Risha. No, Oshun is the most intelligent. Oshun is very intelligent. You can't forget a Rumi lot. You know? <laughs> so um, at some point you realize it's your connecting point where you connect. Because I had lived a very Ogun life up until that point. Um, there were some situations that uh, I was involved in that allowed me to understand the mechanisms of Ogun up close and personal. Uh, I always ended up being the person when someone was going to get shot, I was there. You know, and I had to be the one to hold them, you know, until help arrived. Uh, so I was always involved in these experiences that were mirroring the mythology of my ancestors. You know, uh, the blood rites, and not only the blood rites, um, some of the social relationships that I had with people mirrored mythology. So when I came into uh, the mysteries, I wanted the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I wanted nothing to do with anything that had to do with fighting, incarceration, gangs, because I had been through all of that. So I, was, I had painted the whole first level of my house yellow. And I was trying to trick me into Oshun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I even started a business with her name. I, I went all out. And uh, well, even before Nigeria, everybody was always like, no, you're Shango, you're Ogun. You know, you're a warrior. You come with that. Nope, don't want it. I want to be a lover. And I want to be charming. Because I didn't have that. That's the component. I didn't know how to speak to people and convince them of things like Oshun. Nobody could say no to Oshun. Um, I can't. But um, that's, that's some old shit to me. I think something about themselves. So they, they'll soon can't be shut down. But um, so I wanted to initiate into the mysteries of no, I, <laughs> I wanted to initiate into Oshun, and it kept coming up Ogun everywhere I would go. So I'm going to get the second and third opinion. Ogun, Ogun, strong Oguns. Um, so I I relented and initiated into Ogun and. Um, became more equipped to deal with some of the calamities and confrontations in my life. Uh, and then after that, it was also read during that time that I would be uh, initiating as a student of Ifa. Uh, Ifa is the, the information or the laws, the spiritual, natural, and cosmic laws given to us straight from Oludamari, okay, or straight from the womb of the serpent, who we call Olodumari or Eledumari um, or Edumari, and we'll get into why different spellings and things. So, uh, right after I received Ogun, I did my training in that, and I was learning um, some components of Ifa concurrently. And bought a home and land, and I was I was determined that if this was something I was going to do, I wanted to understand it from a cultural perspective as well. I wanted to understand why water was so important because it wasn't very important to me. You know, because I mean, our water is filthy. So when someone says, give an offering of water, why? It's not a big deal. I can see gin. I can see Henny. You know, E and J. <laughs> you know, we have to pay for those things. So it's it means a little bit more. But then when you live in that space and you go to turn the spigot and just that 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 week, the water pressure is really low. You know, you, you know, you must know you've been there and nothing's hardly coming out. And you may not have a water tank at your home. So uh, you understand how precious it is when now maybe you're walking a half a mile or longer. You might be going up a hot hill to go get water. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, immersing myself in that culture and in that paradigm helped me to understand some of the subtle things that I had not understood before. Um, it helped me to understand how European I was um, mm. at that time. I was so white. <laughs> so, and I thought I was so black, <laughs> you know. Um, it was, it was, it was bad, you know. Even down to things like how I would shake people's hands. You know, I'm breaking people's hands, and you know, because over there the brothers were shaking hands soft, you know, and they usually don't grab the whole hand just the tip, you know, like this. So, and it's a soft thing because it's not. I don't have to prove my manhood to you. I'm a man. You know, me, I have to prove it because when I'm back home 
At any moment, someone can pull me over and treat me like a boy. So I'm taught to give firm handshakes, look people in the eye. Everything has to be hard. I got to hug you hard. I got to drink hard liquor and smoke hard cigarettes. Newport, Marlboro. Everything has to be hard. It has to be all this machismo. And um, I was I was taught a little bit. Uh, I was given insight on what manhood really was and is. So that happened as a product of immersing myself into the culture, which was very healthy. So when I returned, of course, these are some of the things that I shared and taught. So um, I've had a pretty varied exposure to different traditions. Um, and prior to all of that, I was a, a church uh, revival preacher mm -hmm. as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I was kind of a novelty. So, you know, I know that world very well. And uh, when we speak about people using our traditions against us, I've probably seen my highest levels of debauchery mm -hmm. in the church world, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I, I grew up, I was a street kid you know I went through that whole thing but I hadn't seen I never saw someone give some a child coke to have sex with them until I went to the church mm -hmm. you know I, I thought I saw it all but I so um, sometimes things are used against you you go into an environment that you think you're safe and you come out more sick Mm -hmm. You know, um, and some of these things led me out of those environments mm -hmm. because I still had a very um, hard set and militant attitude mm -hmm. about things. So <laughs> my thing was, okay, let's get the bats and break some legs. And I didn't understand <laughs> the level of acceptance and compromise that we have as a people. And that took me, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> so let me not claim that I have that lesson yet. Um, certain things are just completely unacceptable to me. And because of that level of discord that I had with debauchery and with false teaching, it led me to intensify my teaching and to share more of what I knew and what I learned. And that led to schools. I had a temple I was running out of New York for some years that was a very prosperous temple as well. Um, I shut it down because I started noticing some very unhealthy codependencies that were developing. And I wasn't comfortable with that. Um, I wasn't comfortable with uh, people not doing their own work. And every five minutes, baba, 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 baba. And I was getting that from elders. Mm -hmm. So the elders, I would come in and say, look, I need you. I'm going to couple you with this particular person. You're going to serve as a jagna and help them out. That wasn't occurring. And it was still baba, baba, baba. So I said, you know what? Because we're so messianic as a people, I'm going to shut all this down and let's see what y'all do next. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of dispersion. So that showed me, because of that high level of dispersion, I wasn't as good of a teacher as I thought I was. Because I should have been able to get shot in the head and disappear, and people should have been able to carry on with the mission. If that wasn't present, then I was doing something wrong. I couldn't blame the people, I had to blame myself. So I pulled back for a time, reinvented what I was doing, and um, released again, you know, in different forms, online and other things like that. So that is the long, it's probably the longest bio I've given, but I felt it was necessary in this moment for people to understand who they're standing in front of. Uh, I'm nothing but an advanced student. That's it. I'm not a master teacher, okay? Um, there are still things in this world that I'm still somewhat fascinated by. So until I become more detached, I like riding motorcycles really fast. You know, I like uh, fighting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, So that energy is still very strong with me. There's still certain things that, that fascinate me. I love cartoons, you know. Um, so I'm not really a Bible Lao yet. I'm not sensitive enough to be a Bible Lao. I've gone through all of it. Um, but until I can't, Put hot sauce on my food. <laughs> That's the Obatala energy, the purity that comes. And when you when you receive and come into that place of purity, you'll find that things that are of the world are too much. Mm -hmm. You don't want so much of it. That's right. Okay, and when you get to that place, then you can serve at a much higher level. Because now when someone comes to me with a situation, mm -hmm that I may per have a personal feeling about. Though I'm very detached when I work with people, I'll be even more detached, you know. 
Um, and that's the only way you can help people is by being completely detached from their issues. Right now, I still care too much about what I call my people. So therefore, I'm still stuck in identity group. I know everybody nodded when I said that, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Okay, it's but it's it's a it's a process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now I want to be there. I want to still do rituals and do work and teach my people and elevate the awareness of my people. And then eventually I won't care. And then that's when I'll be a Baba, truly a Baba, regardless of my initiations, regardless of uh, my chieftaincy title. Before we travel further, let's start here with some basic definitions so that we can have some common definitions as we go. Who in here, uh, and I, I could make assumptions, but that's not probably the coolest thing to do. Who in here is familiar with African thought? Cool. Okay, and I heard it was, we'll start with you because you raised your hand the highest. <laughs> yeah, what, what would you consider to be African thought? Well, I'm, I'm a student of a lot of different traditions. I've been sure. initiated in a couple of different, to Shango and to mm -hmm. Ifa. Uh, I studied a lot about um, comedic traditions, mm -hmm. Akan. So, you know, even beyond that, just African history and culture. Sure. Know, it's like, since I was little, I was always interested in knowing more about our culture. So, when I say African thought, I'm talking about that kind of thing. Dr. Okay. Ben, <laughs> Products, yeah, yeah. Like developing myself to be a little more who I'm supposed to be in this right. this dimension at this time. So trying to find more myself. So that's that's sure. what I consider the African thought. For sure, for sure. Sister, behind, I saw you had your hand. Um, peace, everyone. Peace. Uh, my idea is that African thought is the I'm on the path, I'm just getting on the path of being very young in it. Okay. And as far as African thought goes, is that all things are one, period. Mm -hmm. period. And that um, trying to get further further away from this mixed up conglomeration of what spirit is supposed to be and center myself in what I consider original African thought, which so much of this other nonsense strings and pieces come from mm -hmm. and so before I make my transition I want to be clear yeah. on who I am and who yeah. I am sure. so that's why I'm on this path and so um, I had to come back to the source so I that's where I'm at all right excellent <coughs> well um, I'm newly initiated the show sure. of, um, about two months ago mm -hmm. and um, you know, I've been part of Pan-Africanist movements for a number of years and sure. studied a lot of the master teachers and things mm -hmm. and understand the connectedness to everything else. So I'm, I'm a young student. Okay. <laughs> I, it's okay. We all are. So am I. Okay. Um, I think last count was 23 years, something like that. But that's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also nothing because I came into it very late. My first instructor in Ifa. Remember, you got Arisha here and Ifa's up here. My first instructor was eight years old. Okay, so you be clear. And I haven't I haven't had contact with him in years, but I guarantee you he could wipe this floor with me. And he's probably not even a priest at this like he's probably <coughs> a biochemist or something. But I guarantee you he'd come here and make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. He was eight. And I was a grown man with car, house, motorcycle, business. I'm grown, I'm established in America. And my first instructor was eight. And he still used to laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> he was at that level. Okay, so um, we all coming into it. Like, don't sweat it, you know, myself included. And uh, that's why sometimes there's a frantic race, you know, to try to catch up when it need not be because he was so fascinated at my stories about New York. That's all he wanted to talk about. You know, the buildings are how tall. This tall. No, taller than that, man. Taller. You know, we would talk about that all day. And uh, he would teach me wo uh, words and things like that. Uh, but he was eight. And that taught me, you know, to really, uh, in many senses, ignore the shell. Mm -hmm. You know? And it really taught me the, <laughs> the mind of Olu Damari. I said, Oldemar is just a big child. 
big old kid. That's all. And when he comes back, he's always going to come back as a child. In our tradition, we don't have anyone coming back as an adult. But when you look at Grecian and Nordic tradition, you have Zeus and Odin, who were never children. They were When they were born, they came out gray-haired and old. That's their highest deity. We don't have that. We all came back as children through the water, through the womb, through the sacred grove. So um, we're all new. Okay, I'm new too, and uh, I'm probably a good 20 to 30 years beyond behind what I'm supposed to really be at if we were to go by our traditional standards. But um, I'm, 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 I still, I got a little, little fire. So, <laughs> so I'm all right. I think I got a little something I can share. Um, and you know, when we speak about the actions that are associated with this level of knowing and, te and spiritual technology, some things we just have. You know, some things do not require initiation. We, we come through with it. So a lot of times we feel like we come into it late and because of that we disregard everything that we came to the table with and that's a humongous mistake. Mm -hmm. When you come into your tradition, African tradition or otherwise, don't throw out what you did so far because genetically you are still those beings that negotiated these high order contracts with the cosmos. So genetically you're going to do certain things by automatic function without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now when you start coming into tradition, what you then learn to do is think about it. So that way you can reproduce it and you can teach it to others. You'll find, and we're going to get into this, at the highest elevation. Do I need another chair? Mm -hmm. I come in late. Like, but they have no time. <laughs> Chairs up in the beginning. Now I'm like a porter. <laughs> hey, all right. How you doing? How you doing? All right. We, got, we good? Yeah, that's only one person. Okay, we still miss the speed. All right, so it's gonna get in. <laughs> this steps here, though. So, y'all make sure I don't fall on your steps. Oh, um, my name will be on the front. You can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, okay, so African thought. Let's let's this. We all spoke about components of it. Everybody was correct. Nobody was incorrect. Okay, but let's just. Let's, let's deal with um, the thought that we have as it return, pertains to our pantheon of individuals that exist within the African community. Of course, you have what we call, we like to call people, walking people, we'll call them, okay? Because all kind of people. Then we have Orisha, right? We have uh, emanations, emanations from Olu Dumare. And we have ancestors. We have Ajay, or Iyami, or Awonilei, witches, okay? And uh, then we have some other entities after that. But let's just stick with our major five for right now. Can you yes. again, please? Sure thing. Anybody got all of them? I'm going to let Lanisha say Walking people, Orisha, Emanations, Ancestors, Witches. Got it. I got it. I don't know what the definition of Orisha. Yeah, no, we're gonna we, yeah, we're gonna break that. I just want to get us all on the same so we know what we're talking about. These these are part of the African community. Now, significantly what you'll find is that the ancestor holds an equal space as a walking person, one who is still walking what we call Onile or the earth, or Aye, the earth's crust. Okay, those are different than, different than those who may be in Orum, which we call heaven. But they hold the same energetic vibration. Okay, so much so that uh, I have a good friend, and I remember the first time I went to his home, because um, I like woodworking. I like woodworking and metalworking. It's something that I just, I'm fascinated by people who can carve and things like that. So he had this beautiful carving, like in the middle of the living room, you know. So I was like, yo, that's a nice chest. Like, man, maybe I might want to buy one and send it back to the States. I don't know where I would put it, but it's just beautiful. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's grandfather. Mm -hmm. The bodies are buried inside the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the living room. So you <laughs> thinking it's a sofa and that's somebody's uncle. But um, they make it very clear that just because someone is no longer walking the earth's crust does not mean that they're not part of 
our community. Okay? So that the ancestors play a significant position, but the position that they play is only an empathetic one. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about empathetic? Empathetic, yes. sure. Okay, um, let's take an Arisha, uh, Arisha Oya. Anybody here familiar with Oya? Mm -hmm. You probably are, right? Yeah, I am. I don't know, am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> <laughs> Certainly you are. Um, Oya, how does she look? Something like her. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> She does. She does. If you look at all the drawings of Oya. Oh, yeah. She had the colors on her. Really yeah. Like. yeah, that's her. Well, the head wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she looks like the pictures of Oya, yeah, as is this sister. Um, so, those pictures were drawn because our ancestors knew that through our fall and dissension through, through our human bodies and our human understanding and thought that we would become complete idiots. So they have to represent our spiritual sciences to us in a way that you re represent them to a child. Mm -hmm. So they created these, these anthropomorphic entities that we could identify with. Well, Ogun looks like this, a bald-headed man with a cigar. And a, a, no, Ogun has never, never walked the forest. Oya has never walked the forest because we're speaking about spiritual entities. Mm -hmm. Okay? So because... Do I got to get another chance? Anybody looking up to me right now? These are spiritual entities that live on the astral plane, planes that are thought projections from your own mind. We're going to get into that. Okay? So therefore, they do not have flesh bodies to have ever experienced what you have, what you've experienced in your somatic reality. The somatic reality is the reality that deals with the five senses. Mm -hmm. So, when you lay down on the bed and you said, oh yeah, I make this bed cool, she doesn't know what it feels to lay down on the bed. She doesn't know what it feels to get her heart broken. Though you have stories about her getting her heart broken and Shango did her dirty. And they said, that, well, she did Ogun dirty first. <laughs> so that's called karma. <laughs> so, yeah, learn mythology. <laughs> so, so, um, so these entities that we call Orisha, they're different streams of cognition. So as they're different streams of cognition, they don't have a human story. Like you have a human story. However, your ancestors do. So when you say, Grandma, the rents do, and I'm nervous, I can't eat my food properly, I wake up thinking about it, I'm one day closer to the first, and all that other stuff that we go through as humans, Grandma says, Yeah, I know what that feels like. Let me get on it. Let me send a charge to the Orisha on your behalf to get them in gear because they could care less if you were living under a bridge or in a mansion. They don't know the difference. All they know is, now that you're under the bridge, you don't feed me like you fed me before. You don't talk to me like you did before. You don't contact me at the higher levels like you did before. And that's, that's there's another thing to that we'll speak about. So when we speak about the empathetic link, it is the ancestors that actually feel for you. Mm. Nothing else in the environment, in the cosmos, feels for you. Nothing. No matter how much you think you got guardian angels and when it rains, they're crying and all that bull crap. <laughs> no. You only think that because you were religiousized. Right. So you were taught that something somewhere cares about you as a replacement and substitute for you really delving into and cultivating a love for the maternal energy. That's what happened. Okay, so when they killed the mother and made her a holy ghost, they had to now figure out a way to tell you that this God, Father God, was now all of a sudden a maternal and nurturing entity that would be there whenever you want him to be, be there. That's bullcrap. As men, we don't even function like that. The masculine principle is, the, is a detached principle. It is God the Father. I'm here, but I ain't really here. You see? Like, I can tell you the women in my life, I don't know what they be talking about. I don't listen. <laughs> I don't. I'm there. But I ain't really there. You know what I'm saying? That's why you're laughing. Because you know what I'm talking about. We ain't really there. That's that, that science of God the Father that we're I got one of those. Uh, well, now you know what it is. It's very cold. <laughs> you phrase going crazy. Man. I mean, you already ran through like 20 things. I'm like, it's changing. It's changing. It's changing. Uh-huh. That's Changa. Right. I'm here, but I ain't here. I'm God the Father. Okay. Um, but I need to be that way because if I'm not that way, I won't be as defensively aware. 
Mm-hmm. If I'm listening to all that crap you talking about, I really can't protect the homestead. You know, I got to look at your shoe, how these shoes fit on my toes hanging off the side. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see my underwear under this slip? <laughs> you know, I have women. I know the conversation. <laughs> I just get little glimpses of it. You know, I remember some of it. <laughs> no, I ain't thinking about that. I'm looking. I hear a car just pulled up out front. That sound like a, like a caprice. <laughs> okay, that's you know what that means. That's police. That's how I just heard the caprice for. Oh, hold on, hold on. How you know the difference between the cars? Let's you know. Quick. I know. <laughs> Turn them lights off. You know. So, uh, anyway, we still here on Earth. You know. So, um, yes. This is kind of off track, but I think it's related. It's okay. um, I had a conversation with the sister who is my godmother about how I am supposed to um, petition the Orishas in mm-hmm. what order my my uh, ancestors, the Orisha of God. And we were a little off in terms of my thinking. And I want to pause you for a second. Okay. When you say you were a little off, did you, I, well, you disagreed or you just didn't Well, I had been, I had thought one thing. Okay. And she was saying another. And I'm still at the point in our relationship where I never cease questioning. And so for me, I'm still confused. You're still, still at odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like the order of God, the ancestors, the Orisha. I thought it was the ancestors first. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I would just like you to... Well, give me your order first. My me... order is the ancestors first. And then... God. Okay. And then no, actually, it was the what I've been doing is okay. the ancestors, right. the Orisha, the Orisha, and then God, and then God. Mm-hmm. And her her thing is well, who was first? And I know I'm supposed to say God. I mean, <coughs> supposed to say that's the answer she's looking for. But I don't know whether I read it or I felt it because I act on a lot of how I feel. Sure. And so when I go into my room in the morning, it's always my ancestors first who right. I acknowledge. Right. And then right behind on the other side of the room, I have some stuff for yeah. God. Gotcha. And um, you know, then I do a couple of other things. So I was just curious as to mm-hmm. your perception about how that works itself out. My perception ain't worth the hill of beans in this situation. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Your order is wrong. Mm -hmm. But your order ain't wrong. (laughs) Okay, I'll tell you why. My perception ain't worth the hill of beans. I don't know how you perceive God. If you perceive God at the level that I rarely teach, because most people don't understand it, because I start with the kidding information. I've pretty much been teaching kidding information for over a decade. If your perception is there, which it might very well be, then your order is absolutely correct. What came first? You came first. Okay? Now, uh, God or Atumare, Oludumare, God the Father, God the Son, God the Mother, is nothing but you functioning in an organized community. So if you're functioning with will, God the Father, intuition, God the Mother, and active force, God the twins. Yeah, they left a the girl out, mm-hmm. but they kept it in the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, Duke and Leia. <laughs> yeah. That was a deep, deep movie. It was Chopra and Bina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't God the Son. Even Haru is androgynous. He has different mm-hmm. aspects. Mm-hmm. Haru is the feminine aspect, and Haru Kuti mm-hmm. is the masculine aspect. They teach you like Haru Kuti is a transformation of Haru when he becomes Ogun. It's when Shango becomes Ogun. But anyway, I'm getting off. So your order is not incorrect. If you perceive yourself and know yourself to be God, then if you say, well, I'm going to serve my guests first, that's not really necessarily problematic. Now, I'll share with you my order, and I'll explain to you why. And it may mean something, or it may not mean a hill of beans. And I'm cool with that. Uh, I deal with Ori head first. I don't give to anybody until I give to my head, because everybody else is, is it's gratuitous, whatever I do with them. I don't have to say a word to an ancestor my entire life. I don't have to say a word to an Orisha my entire life. I don't have to speak to an animal spirit. I ain't got to speak to a crystal. I ain't got to speak to nothing. All I need is my Ori. 
That is that is where that oneness that we talked about. That's how I got to the oneness. Without this, I'm not connected to the source. I'm not connected to Olu Dumari. Everything that comes outside of that is a tool. So the Orisha are a tool. I'm not going to go to you first. Now, again, it, it, it depends on perception. If you read the Art of War, it is said that a good general will always make sure his army feeds first before he does. I'm feeding Ori first. Mm -hmm. Orisha could wait. Okay? If I get to them. Because it is an honor when I feed them. Mm -hmm. To them. I honor them by saying Oshun, Shango, Orisha, Oko, Ibeje, Oya, Olokun, Ochosi, Dada, Nananbuklu. I just honored them because I brought them in this space and made them even more real. Because I got the soul. They ain't got the soul. Remember, the one with the soul is what animates the one without. Okay? So now, those are tools. But then we say, well, what about my ancestors? Upon the shoulders I stand, Ubuntu. Right? So we got the ancestors, but in truth, you had your time. You should have did what you're supposed to do when you was here. Mm -hmm. This is my time now. You see? So I don't necessarily have to service my ancestors. I do it because they hook me up. And I do it because when I study more of their story, I study I, I realize how much they did to create a different environment for me today. So it's out of gratitude, but I don't have to. It's not mandatory. The only thing you have to work with is your own soul. Everything else falls in line after that. Literally. It, it waits in line. And can I get, <coughs> I get a little bit of that rum? Can I get a little bit of that water? Can I get a little bit of that incense? You see? Um, so that's why I follow that order. Ori, I go to Ori. Then I go to my Egun, which is my ancestors. Then I go to the Iyami, the witches, because I got a daughter who's a little witch. So I go to the Iyami, you know, look out for her. And then I go to the Eurisha, last. Okay, that's typically the order that I work in. Now, of course, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm walking down the street and I have a, I'm having an Eshu moment, I'll give something to Eshu in the moment. You know, I don't always stick to anything hard set because I'm God, I don't have to. And I just want you to understand I'm using that God, that word God parathetically. It's probably one of the lowest vibrations we could bring into the room right now. You know, but just so everyone is on the same page. Most have somewhat of a, of a conception of this idea of um, God or this idea of shit. It's the same thing. Okay. So um, everybody nod their heads so they must know why when I said God is shit. So um, remember I'm running it like a classroom. So... Um, when we connect with that soot energy, or that carbon energy, or that shoot, or that gut, coming from the German, mm -hmm. that could mean so many different things. You see, that you can service it last. A god is only something that has influence over you. That's it. A god is a point of influence. Um, and this is why Arishas are not gods. When you make an Arisha a god, you actually disrespect an Arisha. Because the Orisha says, my job is not to influence you. I wasn't created for that. My, God, my job is to make you more intelligent. That's why you designed me. So by you making me something that has to be of maternal energy that services your every need because you miss the breast. You miss sucking on your mother's breast and having her every five, whenever you call, cry, mommy, 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 she was right there. And now that you don't have that anymore, you're trying to make everything else in the atmosphere that same thing. So when you do that to an Arisha, they say, nah, man, we... Ogun is like, dude, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you can't sit on my lap. No, I'm Ogun. Shango, no. You know, little sisters, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so when we try to transubstantiate these entities into something that they're not, we actually disrespect them. Uh, and the same thing goes for our, our Egun. When we try to make our Egun all-knowing, we actually limit their journey. When we say, I'm going to go to my ancestors and ask them about this situation, who says they know everything now? If I stood on one of these chairs, I know more than everybody in the room. But then you just got to stand on the steps. You got more than I got. 
You see? So they may have a higher perspective because they no longer are locked to the density of their human body, or what we call in Europe the Ori Ara. The Ori Ara also signifies the shoulders because the shoulders support the head. So shoulders are very important. I'm quicker to give an offering to my shoulders than I am to an Orisha, just so you know. And I do. I give offerings to my eyes. I give offerings to my hands, which we call Owo. I give offerings to my thighs, which we call Eshe. I give offerings to my lower caps, which we call Omo Eshe, because they all signify a different thing <laughs> in the body of God. You know, it's just like in our comedic understandings, uh, Atum, or the soul of this, was always said to be the face of God. You see? And then you had An Anpu, or Anubis, uh, who was said to be the heirs of God. So I can go to Anpu like this. I can go to I can go to, to the soul of this like this. You know, I can give my offerings in that way. Um okay. Okay. Um so again it's our it's our understanding of where our deityhood begins and where and where it ends. That kind of will affect maybe some of the order and how we do offerings and so forth and so on. Alright? You're welcome. So again, we're coming to a common definition of terms. So we understand now that the ancestors, what link do they provide for us? Feelings. Feelings, empathetic, right, exactly. They're, they're your feelings to the cosmos. Nothing's feeling for you. Nothing. Okay? What we're dealing with when we're dealing with Orisha, we're dealing with indifferent energy matrices. Indifferent. They don't hate you, they don't love you because they're not dealing with chakras. The only time you give Orishas that type of polarity trap is when you put them in your chakras. <clears throat> okay? So we know the solar chakra. Who lives there? Anybody? Okay, the yellow one? Oshun. So it's a yellow one. No, that one. Okay, but can Oshun leave the solar chakra? Yeah. Yeah. I tried that. Right. Now, if you deal with Oshun from a peer-to-peer -peer level, you may be able to get her transformed into something else to get out of there. But her cosmic natural law puts her in that trap of the chakra. We call the chakra wheels houses, right? Mm -hmm. But we never call them prisons. Right? But we got prison houses. It's a prison. Because it either means I'm going to project my identity in the world through my solar chakra, or I'm not going to project my identity. You see the polarity? of negative and positive, each chakra holds its own polarity. So anytime you're dealing in the world of polarity, you are now in prison. If it has to be this or it has to be that, that means you're dealing in human reality. Problem. No matter how beautiful it appears. No matter how cool you go into Photoshop and make the yin and yang symbol and make the, oh, I'm going to make it red and black and I'm going to put feathers off of it. You, what you have as a symbol is a badge of a warden. Because that, that yin and yang symbol is a warden's badge that says, this is your trap. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even right now, part of you is stuck in the trap of my speech. And what that trap is, you're either listening or you're not listening. You're neglecting the other dimension of feeling. You're neglecting the vibration that I'm sending out into the room. You're, ne you're neglecting all of the synchronicitous activities and coincidences that led you up to this moment to be here today. That's all a part of everything that I'm saying to you right now. Okay? So when you allow yourself to get stuck in the off and on, because speech is nothing but noise and silence, as is music. If I sat here and just said, ah, uh, doesn't mean anything, right? Because at some point I have to go, ah, uh, ah, uh, I am saying something. You need noise and silence, polarity, in order for you to understand. But would it be possible for me to stand here and say nothing and you still understand everything that I want to convey to you? Okay, so that means we just broke out of the prison. We broke out of the laws of that prison. So the Orisha, they represent a heaven and hell of human cognition. They represent uh, something that is pleasant or that can be unpleasant in your human cognition, in your stream of cognition. That is an Orisha. 
Now, I've probably said this about 50 times to various radio interviews and stuff, so I'm going to see if someone can say it for me who has listened to the shows, you know, maybe one of the students. Uh, what does the word Orisha mean? Ori means head. Sa means something else, but I can't remember this moment. <laughs> no, um, hold on. I'm um, selected. Selected. Okay. Selected, 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 selected head. Selected. But it, it not only means head, Ori also means what? <laughs> Ori also means consciousness. Ori is consciousness. I saw you. Don't worry. I'm not gonna tell anybody that you have treats. <laughs> Ori means consciousness. Sa means to be seated or selected. So an Orisha is a selected consciousness. Now, why would we need to select the conscious? Why can't we just use the one that we got? It could be destructive. It could be destructive. It's not expansive enough. It's not expansive enough. But we don't recognize it, its ability to expand, to be expanded. We are unconscious with that one consciousness. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's but one if, way to look at it. If you're saying that the Orisha is indifferent, then selecting it allows us to be unbiased, I guess, in a sense. We're not so much emotionally attached to it, to outcomes of things. If their reach is, is, is indifferent, then mm -hmm. I might be misunderstanding this. We no. don't have an emotional connection, then that allows us to remove that component that may alter our thinking in different outcome situations. Um, no, and I'm gonna tell you yes and no, but I, I gotta give you more no than yes. <laughs> 85% no, 15% yes. I'll take it. Okay. And the reason I say that is because if I give you a full yes, then I think it may be confusing to the rest of the room. You're kind of right. That was confusing to the rest of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be the point of confusion. I'd rather that. Get presented this way. I'm okay. used to being the bad guy. Um, what emotional connection do you have with the outcome of what a hammer does for you? Depends on what I'm trying to do. Right. So th that's the yes part. Okay. So yeah, if I'm trying to build my house and the hammer's supposed to put the nail in, I'm not using a screwdriver, I'm using a hammer, then I expect this to happen and I'm excited when it does happen or maybe I'm indifferent because it's supposed to do that. <clears throat> but the hammer itself, how important is the hammer? It's a tool. It's a tool. How important is it? Anybody ever opened up something with a butter knife? <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's a screwdriver, right? <laughs> so now I ask again how important is the tool? It's as important it's as, as a task. task. It's as important as a task? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to have some more in the room. Awesome. Mm -hmm. The tool could change. So really could have used the brick. Could have used the brick. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now, how would you know to use a screwdriver, a brick, or a butter knife, or a hanger? Or antenna. Training. Mm -hmm. Your experience. Based on the outcome you're looking for. Go, 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 go younger. Children. Like somebody taught somebody you. Taught. Yeah, somebody taught. 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 You can't teach Impulse. children nothing about how to act. That's trial and error. It's the only thing they listen to. Impulse. Your imagination. We call it ingenuity. Oh, okay. Come on now. As children, we, we did that. Because as a child, I know I used to go in the garage. I love the garage. It was my favorite room. I would use anything for anything. <laughs> and then my pops would come, yo, who did this? <laughs> I'm on what I just, the part I just added onto my bike. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> it worked at night, so I knew if I just stayed out of certain, I'd be good. <laughs> you know? um, so it's your ingenuity or what we call your imagination that allows you to take the tool or a different tool for whatever the circumstances is. Your imagination is birthed from your soul's thinking. That's where imagination comes from. That's why that's the first thing that's locked down when you go to public school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boy, you got he daydreams too much. Mm -hmm. I used to get that one all the time. Yeah. ADHD. Yeah. ADHD. You're making up stuff. You know, kids come out dumb and dumb every year. We got a new one for you. 
just making up stuff, you know? Um, so it's the imagination and ingenuity as birth from the soul expressed through the aura of your consciousness that now decides what tool you're going to pick. So therefore, if I say I want to fall in love or I want a new woman, would I necessarily always go to Oshun, Oshun or Shango because that's what they represent? No. Because depending on how I perceive things and my soul is moving and my matrix, I may say I may go to Oya because I want it to happen quick. You know, make swift change in my life. When I go out tomorrow morning, I want a new, a uh, woman's going to bring a whole new reality to my world. I may go to a goon and say, bring her here aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> Drag her. You know? <laughs> Sometimes, it, you know, you learn how to use what tool for what job. And when you learn how to use what tool for what job as expressed through your will. See, that's the most important piece. And that is the main reason why we put candles on our shrines. It's not because it looks pretty or because we can focus into the flame and the flame changes our brain waves from beta to alpha back again into delta. It's not just that. It's because the fire represents, which we call rock, in our ancient times it represented your will. And the will is a product directly from the soul. No soul, no will. You're going to see how we're going to loop in the answer what we were talking about before. So why would we pick an Orisha? Does an Arisha have a soul? No. So then Arisha has no will. This is why the Arisha won't just go do something for you because they feel for you. Even if they did, they have, they're sitting still. They can't do anything. They're only a tool that has a certain character for a certain position and posture. They're a tool with character. That goes for every astral entity that you can encounter on the earth plane. They do not have will. You are the will of the cosmos. You. This is the reason why when I go, back to again, I go to head first. Because without will, nothing moves. I can go to the Arisha all day and give offerings all day. All day. And some of you said earlier, when I petition, well, the word petition means to beg. Why would I beg my servant? Mm. We all work, let's see, all of us here, we're employees for some big multi billionaire, and we all work in that particular individual's mansion, right? That individual who is the master of the house, you have a master and a mistress, they seem to always come to us for advice. They seem to always come to us to tell us uh, to forecast things for, for them, and they seem to come to us to always ask if they can have certain things in life. How will we begin to perceive our master? Come on with it, come with it. Go to their level of understanding because they, they clearly have us backwards. So we would do it. Mm -hmm. so what was the last one? No, what I was trying to say is since they're seeing us as their master and sort of coming to us as children, we would then play that role. We would play the role, but let's try this one too. But how do we feel about it? Oh, disrespect. I mean, confused too. Probably lose respect. Mm -hmm. Lose See, respect, confused. Yeah. They will appear frustrated. Frustrated. Mm -hmm. We would resent so the master. Why? Thank you. Why do you keep asking me? You. We're given something I don't even have, a doggone soul. Mm -hmm. You have an Ori. Why are you coming and asking, do I need to play the Luciferian story on you? <laughs> do I need to do that and transform myself into a serpent to get you to see that you have free will because you have a soul? Because <clears throat> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll confuse you. I'll become Eshu Elekba for the moment if you need me to, just to show you your power. I'll become a jinn, genie, imagine, religion, jinn. I'll become a jinn in your first eye. And I will say, Master, your wish is my command. And I'm in all blue, of course, because I'm melanated. I'm you. I'm your demons. Saying, I will grant you your wish. And then you'll realize, man, all this time when I was asking the gen to do the thinking for me, 
I should have been doing the thinking and just sending them to charge. Because if they do the thinking for me, they're going to resent me and then they're going to trick me. Because as long as I function from this paradigm where I'm not standing as a fully matured adult, I put their existence in jeopardy. What, what, how does the room feel right now, besides from hot? Hot. Hot. <laughs> 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 no divination on that. Spiritually. There's a lot of energy in the room right now. I was going to say now. the same thing. I can almost feel it. You can almost feel it? Yeah. I can oh. feel it. For I sure. can feel it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Anybody else? Because you can cock your head to the side for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hot. I should put my hair up. <laughs> yeah. So the question, not the question. But I'm, I'm going to get to that one yeah. second. So we feel that spiritual energy, right? Yeah. That bullet. Yeah. How do you, what, what spirit do you feel like? Strong spirit. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll take that. Strong spirit. We feel something, right? Because we're all here. Correct? Now what happens when we leave? Pack all the chairs up and overnight and tomorrow. What's here? And let's say maybe it starts to dissipate. And let's say maybe they, somebody comes in and they do a, I don't know, a juicing class. Same spirit? No. Right now, that strong spirit that's in the room or that, sh that thickness or whatever we're all feeling right now, the spirit of learning, the spirit of ascension, is necessary and needed for this moment. So therefore, we're all feeding into it. Got it? We're all feeding into it. Now, when we stop feeding into it because we no longer need it, it will dissipate, like all spirits do, if you do not feed them. Mm. Orisha. Here we go. Angels. Lawau. Neturu. And Kisi. Earth spirits. Plant spirits. Right? When we no longer need them, <coughs> And we transcend to our higher vibration, which we're going to. We have no choice, no matter how bad it looks out here. Everyone's coming. So when we transcend to that higher vibration, however long it takes, what happens to them? They dissipate. <coughs> they die. They no longer need it. Okay? Now, some of you, when I said it, you didn't accept it. Even though logically I already broke it down to you 45 minutes ago why that's the case. But you can't imagine that beautiful spirit that comes into your home, the mockingbird, the squirrel, the fox, whatever, the Orisha that you love so much that it will one day cease to be. And it's the same feeling you had when mommy stopped giving you the titty and you felt lonely. It's the same feeling you had. So what you did, you went out and made a new God. Okay? Because we don't like to detach. So now what will happen is this. If I have a peer-to-peer -peer relationship with certain Orisha, and if I created them because I have the breath of life again from Olo Damare, and I created them for my purposes and the purposes of my children, can I also then say, because I created you, I will take you with me? Mm -hmm. Can, right? Mm -hmm. But the one who is functioning as a spiritual child and petitioning and begging and going to them for guidance and help all the time can't take them anywhere because that individual ain't going to get there themselves. So those spirits look at you and they get disgruntled. Anyone here ever been to New York? Probably y'all close by. No? Central Park? Yes. If you've had an opportunity, I'm going to be having a talk to the trees in Central Park one day. It's going to blow your mind. You know, it's going to really blow you. I used to sleep out there. Like now I'm some homeless stuff. I used to fall asleep out there. <laughs> <laughs> Built himself back up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I used, to, I used to go out there. and um, But I tell you the way to things work genetically. I'll tell you. Let's see how we're going to set this one up. Oh, peace, brother. All right. That's Brother Charles. Brother Charles. Oh 
So it is that, that energy that recreates itself. So I used to speak to those trees in Central Park. Half of those trees are not even there anymore. Mm -hmm. The trees, not the bark and the wood, the branches and the leaves, those are still there. The trees been left. I remember speaking to those trees in the, in the late 80s and they were so disgruntled. I would walk and I would feel like things hitting me. Like, yo, yo. And I, I remember I used to walk through Central Park as a, because we used to go there and break dance and stuff. And I would always have my rays out. I just always felt like there's something wrong, like we about to get jumped, something, something ain't right here. I didn't understand it was the trees trying to get my attention. Till I came into another understanding and I started speaking to them, they were so pissed off. And then I remember speaking to them towards the late night and most of them was gone. I would go to touch it, it was nothing. Remember I talked about earlier that soulless individual speed? That's what was there. Now as a tree, if I ran, I would hit my head, but there wasn't anything inside of it. That's the real thing. Anything on the outside is fake. That doesn't, doesn't matter. They've been left. Okay, so that's why you keep seeing all the dolphins wash up and the, the tortoise and the birds falling out the sky. They're out. I'm gone. Mm. You know? Mm. So these entities leave when we know when they when they serve their purpose and we no longer have a use for them. But if you come to the Orisha or any other angel or any energy that you're dealing with from a peer-to-peer -peer level and then surpass that and say, now, okay, I will command you. I will employ you because that's what you want and that's what you were designed for. Then now they know you have the potential to transform them. Hmm. because you're interacting with them at a higher level. If we date and we can join ourselves with people who we know of our lower vibration, hmm. either our vibration lowers <clears throat> or we learn lessons through frustration with their low level lessons. Hmm. If we can join with people who are higher than us, you know, so at our level, but who are higher than us, then what will happen is that they'll transform us just through association and now we'll be able to see and do things that we never really had the spiritual privilege to do to begin with. Many of us have encountered this because a lot of us in this in this room, we, do, we deal with esoterics and spirituality. So therefore, low vibrational people tend to join themselves with people like us because they need to feed off of us. Okay? And then, or people who come and they're broken and fragmented like broken, wounded animals. They always come to us and we say, you know, I attract people who got so much drama in their life. Right? We can all say that in the room. That's because you're a healer, but you won't step into your divine position. Wow. So if, you, if, I, if someone's going to walk through the hood and that individual is a dignitary worth six or seven million dollars, but has forgot that they're a dignitary worth six or seven million dollars, you're going to have a lot of friends. Oh, you don't know how to use that ATM card? I'll show you. I, I got you. I got, what's your birthday? I think I can figure it out. Okay? So that is what we have become. These entities and these spirits, they see us before we see ourselves. So we destroy our ability and potential to self-actualize. In that sense, we destroy our ability to be us, and in effect, we destroy the divine relationship that we're supposed to have with the Risha and Netru and all the spirits that accompany us. Because they're saying, we're here to service you. We gave you stories of Aladdin and the lamp. They even put it in Disney. Okay? We told you that if you polish the lamp of God, also known as the pineal, if you polish it, the jinn will come forth and serve you. But you won't polish this because this is the Orbi Iwaju. You won't polish the head. You'll tell me about Arisha. Hmm. I'll say, who are you? I'm, I'm Sean Go. I'm on Chosi. I'm the chef. I'm the butler. That's what you're basically saying. Okay? That's what you're saying when you say that. As opposed to say, I'm the master of the temple. Okay? And I have entities that I that I found in my temple. Because the, the temple was so vast. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. We got to take it back to the Bible. I know we got some Bible readers in here. Or when you... <laughs> yeah, hide it. <laughs> when you... Hey, I, I'll tell you. I don't want to say where it was. That's my only thing. But I was somewhere with a student doing some ritual. And this student is initiated into Ephah's and Ephah. Both of them, husband and wife. And we were out in the woods and, we'll just say a bug, bit the wife. 
Now they've been back and forth to Nigeria. They spent like 67 grand on initi initiations between themselves and I think their son. Yeah, you can get got. <laughs> you can get got. Um, and it's, it's, it can be an expensive tradition if you don't realize how much you can get without initiation. If you fall for the churchical mindset and think that mm -hmm. in order to to attach yourself to any of these entities that you need somebody else to make the introduction for you somebody who can't even get on top of their oil in their own country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna pay 67 grand everything i'm saying is for a purpose as above mm -hmm. so below you'd be surprised when you make mm -hmm. relationships with the community what the community will then do because they see you as a pair You'll be surprised when you make relationships with the community <laughs> okay. what the community will do for you because they see you as a pair. That will come back down to earth. Mm -hmm. So she got bit by this thing and I saw it. It was, it was pretty ugly looking. And she screamed out, Jesus Christ! Beans <laughs> 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 right? at the Mr. T. <laughs> that gets started saying, you know, had the, the look. I mean, we're in the woods and we're about to do some some heavy big time witch stuff. You know, some big time Ifa stuff. And I had to say it later because in the moment she's in pain. But I said, you see, you see who you really depend on mm -hmm. when you and your time of need. You see who you called out first? Mm -hmm. That shows you where you still got to, to travel. That's your That's your dependency right there. You see, so um, again, we're unable to evolve these entities that they wish to evolve, even though they don't have a soul or or, re or will, but they have what is called character. The same thing your soul does not have. You do not have character. All this, this funky and fashion fly stuff that I see around the room, this is a product of your Orisha understanding. You stood in the mirror and said, what color do I feel like today? How do I want my hair? What do I want to smell like today? Your soul did not do that because your soul is indifferent to that reality. Your soul never touches the planet. That's why your soul, your soul stays pure. You don't want your soul to touch the planet. You don't. In Kemet, we are the judgment scene. Okay? But I'm in Ket. And in this, this judgment scene, which later became the judgment scene with Anpu, who you also may know as Anubis, uh, a person was judged by a jury of, four, of 42 assessors, okay? And what was so, what was judged was the soul. And the soul, of course, had to weigh itself against <laughs> a feather, a maotic feather, which is, was an ostrich feather. So it ain't like it was a pigeon feather, okay? You might be familiar with ostrich, like they're brutal. Yeah, you don't want to get nailed. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them up close. They're ugly, they're big, and they're strong. Yeah. Um, so when we think of Ma'at, a lot of times we think of like this beautiful African entity. But this is why they say justice is swift. Ma'at represented justice. And the, the ostrich can run up to like 45 miles an hour for elongated periods. Not like the cheetah, where it's got 10 seconds, it's got to stop. It'll just keep running next to you, next to your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you about to make a left? Okay. Let me make sure. Yeah, you got it. Come on. You know, I'll get you when we get to your house. So um, that's the ostrich. It, it has that longevity, you know, represented by that, again, that Ma'atic structure. So, in Kemet, we also have 42 provinces, okay, known provinces, as above, so below. It is said that when Tehuti work, wrote his first work, it had 42 books, okay? So, we see that number 42 is significant. And then with Ma'at, we know we have 42 declarations of I have not. Now, why is it that we can say I have not when you all have? I got a room full of sin in here. I can feel it. <laughs> so how can you say, I have not, brother? I'm not sure I can answer that. Okay. Yes. Anyone? Because your soul has it. Because your soul has it. Your soul has stayed pure and then perfect. Now, I've covered this on the show about three times, so I would expect one of the students to say no when you try to get credit. <laughs> so the soul has remained untouched so it is pure therefore we, the soul does not need the thou shalt not proclamations 
doesn't even come near it. In our tradition, we don't have that because we understand the part that you're speaking to the, the Tao barely exists. You talking about my human body? You, you talking about when I stole some candy out of the store? So what? Well, that's going to keep me out of heaven because I stole a, a big cup Reese's Pieces. You know? No. Now I'm kind of telling myself because those just came out. <laughs> 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 no, scrap Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah, Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah. I'm back on my, my Sometimes that line be long and you got lectures to get to and you just need something to make your stomach stop growling and that mm-hmm. big cut pieces pieces. You know. But I'm doing it for y'all so I can get a hell of time. <laughs> y'all again. So <laughs> Master P. But um So the thou is fallible. The thou is the thou is frail. The thou will make the mistakes. The I have not. The true I is the ori. It has no character, so therefore it has no cravings or desires. Because it has no cravings or desires, it believe it believes in nothing. It knows only truth, absolute truth. And once it knows absolute truth, it will never step outside of those boundaries. It's stuck to those laws of truth. It cannot break it. However, your spirit can. Your spirit can break all kind of laws, okay? Just like we got a certain spirit in this room and we leave to be another spirit. But in the same instance, the spirit sometimes can disconnect from the soul. That's when you feel doubt, depression, fear, worry, um, feelings of loneliness. Always come from the same exact thing. Whenever you feel lonely, or for those of you who are artists or writers, whenever you get writer's block or creative block, it's because your spirit is not in line with your ancestral mission. Always. I can tell you that. If you want to fix that, all you do is just do an ancestral walk and go give some Guinness stout to your ancestors. I guarantee your ideas will start coming. Writer's block comes from when you feel alone. Because of, of your own self, you have no ideas. You're just a soul. You're boring. So any cool thing you're doing only signifies your level of connection to the spirit. The, the, the funkier a person's style is, the more connected they are to the spiritual awareness. Okay? The less funky their style is, the more they are invested in personality. Mm. And those are usually people who are afraid to do I couldn't wear anything like that. No. You know, I or a guy, I couldn't wear a see-through shirt. <laughs> no. I, I, I could so you know my level of connection. I ain't wearing no see through shirt. I don't want to see that. You know. Um, you know, then you see my nipple ring. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> but uh so uh, yeah, so that level is what creates that creative force. It creates that creative expression on the planet. Now we have three entities because we were covering ancestors, so we know our empath- empathetic link. The Ori, which is our soul, our ka. Then we had also Arisha, which we understand are strings of cognition that we select depending on what we need for the moment. The reason we select them is because they have the character that we need in the moment. Like right now, I'm picking a certain Arisha because it's a character that I want. That's the character of the person who's, who enjoys socializing, who is actually pretending that I'm actually friendly and all that other stuff because that's not how I really am. So I have to pick this mask, because if I didn't present this mask to you right now, you wouldn't learn at the level that you're learning right now. What's she talking about? She ain't making fun of me. No. (laughs) It's fun, I ain't talking in front of people. So what energy are you using right now? This is more, um, this Yemoja, but there's an aspect of Yemoja that is um, very close to Shango, Yemoja Shaba. And um, she she is a redeemer, uh, but she represents um, she represents what we call Ofo Ashe, which is word power. Mm. Okay, so it's the word power that the mother has. You know, it's that time. You know, most time you listen to your mothers. Mm-hmm. You really only usually come to your mother for recovery. Mm-hmm. You know, but there are certain things when she look look at me. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, okay. okay, you know, my mother, she, she used to have real long natural fingernails, she would squeeze my cheek, <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be, and these things, you know, be <laughs> all in it, what, <laughs> don't steal that thing, don't that big cup, <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, yes, it's there. Um, say that again, Yemonja Ashaba. Or Ashaba. A, with the A at the beginning. A, a at the beginning, S A B A. It's not S H A. Now, if you look at, uh, if you if you try to find it, you'll find Yemonja A C H A B A. That's mm -hmm. the wrong spelling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the energy that um, before you guys got here, I was outside invoking. And that's the reason why I have on blue suede shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, because that's the principles and the foundation I wanted to stand on. I needed that black booty right there. That is the symbol of you, in case you didn't know. It's a That's a symbol. I needed that black booty to sit on and that's the throne, because the, the, the black woman's behind represents the throne of the rulers. There's no ruler that comes into leadership without sitting on first the throne of his mother. If he doesn't sit on the throne of his mother, he ain't leading nothing because he hasn't received colostrum. So therefore, he hasn't received that milky substance mm -hmm. that teaches him how to socialize with other people. If he can't figure out how to socialize with other people, then he can never figure out his character in the community. Mm -hmm. So he'll never come into rulership. You don't breastfeed, you don't create a ruler. So sometimes I go back and I get some of that cosmic milk because that's what's just needed at the moment. So before I left, I felt, yeah, I'm feeling it. See my job. I might have to be a little bit more nurturing and maternal in this particular instance and be a bit detached. You know, because she's, you know, when you're walking on them hot sands and you want that cool water on your feet, you run, you know, to that water. But you ain't really touching the water. You're just touching the edge of it. She's way out there, mm -hmm. you know, and she's always out there. And even when you get in a boat, <laughs> she's still always out there. See, because you go that way, oh man, you still got water all the way over there, so you can never really get too close to her. So that's the energy I invoke for today, you know. Um, so we select the consciousness and the energy based on what we need. Now, why would we need to do anything? Uh, I have a question. Yes. That may help. Me understand where you're going with this. Can I ask it now, or should I wait? Mm -hmm. Let me answer hers, then I'm gonna get back to you. You had a question that I paused you. Ah, uh, you must have saw it because I didn't. <laughs> I'm still at the place of charging the Orisha mm -hmm. as opposed to petitioning the Orisha. Right. And I get that part, mm -hmm. or begging, um, because of the whole will thing. So. It'll come back. All right. So good. Maybe that's all we need to hear. Yeah, it'll come back. Okay. The question, I'm not sure how to word the question, but something around automatic selection of Nerisha, where it's not a conscious choice, it's just sort of automatically happens. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you talk to about that, uh, how some people may have that ability and not know it and then later realize they have that ability and they're able to then hopefully uh, uh, use it? Uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, um, we don't have to say Orisha. Right. You know, uh, we all have the potential and the capability to pick a per personality or identity and say, I wish I was like that. Or when I talk to this person, I'm going to do this. You know, um, that is a form of picking an Orisha. Now, there are certain times where that happens automatically, but that happens automatically by immersing your, yourself into that energy's environment, okay? For instance, when I was younger, uh, I, always, I was a music artist, I always played instruments. But at one point, I, a lot of the music and the songs I would create sounded like Rick James. Because that was my, to this day, that's my hero. That's no one. I love me some Rick James now. There's nobody cool. I don't care. Whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. Rick James. Was, that was my God. As a child, I wanted to Jerry Curl and everything. When I was younger, that was, I, it was Isaac Hayes. I love Isaac Hayes. Okay. But. <laughs> I like Rick James more. <laughs> um, so what I found was eventually some of what I did automatically began to be like what even things I didn't know about him because he was such a he was Osiris by the way. Um, he was such a powerful entity that's why I had a pull to him. 
Mm -hmm. Because as everyone read my book, you know my first name is Haru, the son of Osiris. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so there were certain Osirian figures I was drawn to, one of which being Teddy Pendergrass, mm -hmm. who's also Osiris, that's why he's on the throne. Um, I have pictures of my home right now of Curtis Mayfield on the wall, mm -hmm. also on the throne. <laughs> okay, you look at that wheelchair, it means something else too. Mm -hmm. Okay, these were all Osirian figures. So when I was younger, I was obsessed with them, you know, um, and then later I understood it. So a lot of times we'll pick certain entities by automatic function or automatic selection, but it's, and these two over here writing notes. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so we'll pick certain entities, you know, I didn't say who. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By automatic function based on what we have a propensity and inclination towards. But in effect, even right now in this moment, you're picking spiritual entities because the entities are your organs. Remember, when we're dealing with the gods, and if we're going to use the terminology or understanding of the gods or God, we have to understand that our thought is polytheistic. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times when we get in front of people, we start trying to, you know, well, no, 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 it's like Christianity. It's, we, we believe in one God now, but that God has different helpers. We call it the reason. No, we don't. We believe in many gods. We're polytheists. Okay? So that's better. It's more. No. But, you know, the, but, the, but the thing is, um, so each of your organs represents a different Arisha. The Arisha or the Apusun, they live inside of your, your organs. Okay? So at any moment, okay, you're connecting with them and automatically, when I'm breathing, that's, you know, that, that, that metabolism, the anabolic and the catabolic process, I'm building and destroying in the same instance. You know, I'm, I'm invoking Ogun and Obatala just in my breath. When I feel something, if, if we're talking and, and, and we're laughing and we're joking and I have an emotional rise in what we're doing right now, that, that emotional rise represents Obatala. Okay, Obatala is when your emotions go high. Okay, in Kemet we called him Osir or Osiris, represented by the eye. Okay, but that represented high emotions. Okay, it was it was really it was really a watery entity. Even though Batala has no element really associated with him, truthfully. We associate him with mountains, but that's just because we can't figure it out. <laughs> and, and the reason we can't figure him out is because he's not an Orisha. He's an emanation directly from Oludumare. So there is he doesn't ever touch the ground. That's why Obatala people are so airheaded. Mm. Hey. <laughs> it's not their fault. <laughs> They're less human than we are. When we say right now, you know, I, I think everyone in the room can agree that we're part human, part divinity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much? What's the breakdown? 50 50. Right. Depends on the individual. We, right. We say 50 50. Yeah, 50 50. <laughs> Says who? What in nature is exactly 50 50? You know? It changes, doesn't it? Doesn't it as a flow? It can ebb and flow, but we all come into the planet with a certain percentage and a certain amount of a certain thing, you know. Um, so some of us are more God than we are human. Okay. Your brother's okay? In terms of, again, um, that automatic selection, by automatic function, we're moving as divinity because we are the mind and body of God. And you always have to realize it. That's why, again, some people say in the room, well, I just came into this, I'm new to it. No, you're not. The moment you came to the planet, you were God in condensed form. Mm. And whatever that, whatever you did was godly. Whatever you did was godly. Okay? Um, because God is not piety. Yeah. You know, oh, I was going to come plug that in now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I think we're, we we cool. Yeah, uh, well, it's cool. Don't worry about it. The poor are getting cool. Yeah, and we're connecting with each other. Yeah, <laughs> now we're like one, <laughs> one big sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, whatever you do is is divine, straight up. And I know it may feel like. So am I expressing a statement of acceptance for all the foul stuff we do in our community? No, I don't accept everything that God does. No. God is a perfecting work. 
So as God is perfecting, I am perfecting. That's why I'm here to represent the corruption of God. So whatever I do, if I come mm here, -hmm. you got certain children, Dr. Malachi Z. York spoke about this. He called them disagreeables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they just, you, you keep trying and trying, they just won't act right. They won't get right. You know, um, and what it is is that what you're ignoring, I mean, you're beating their tail. It ain't working because most times disagreeables will tougher than other mm -hmm. children. So they just look at yeah, I'm taking because I was born to do this. There you go. Okay, <laughs> so give me, give me all you got. What it is is their soul is trying to let you know, hey man, this is where I'm at. You ain't giving me the medicine I need. Yeah, I'm. I cut that boy's face down the street, or I keep peeing on the floor, or whatever, because they do the wildest things. They just do things that make you. Why would you do that? So it's not regular child mischief, you know. It's the soul that's crying out to you to let you know where the individual is so that you can give them a certain level of medicine, not get upset with them because of the holographic expression of how the spirit now decides to interpret the soul's confusion and calamity. It will come out a certain way, but that's because of the level of the spirit. I can't express it any, any other way. It's like you might go to a reading by someone and when I'm reading an individual, I'm reading your soul and asking your soul to share information with my soul. And then I express it to you out of mouth. Nothing else is coming into the room. But if I'm not a learned individual, then my vocabulary and my means and breadth and scope of explanation is going to be very limited. I'll only say this is a bad reading or a good reading. If I get a reading that speaks about death, I may not speak to you about transformation. I, just, I might say, don't ride your bike this weekend. You're going to die. <laughs> I might not say if you ride your bike this weekend, you're going to have an encounter with your ancestors. <coughs> They're going to keep you boxing into a certain space. And in that certain space, you're going to transform yourself. See, because my vocabulary is wider in that sense. So that's why in this season, the greatest entity and energy to worship is thought. Mm. You're going to worship anything. We're in a new age now. Okay. And we're not just in the age of esoterics. We're in the age of exoterics. Okay, it's not just about how you perceive metaphysical and miraculous phenomenon and how you, and you interpret it and project it back into yourself and how you now give yourself a new name, a new dialogue, or a new look. It's also how you affect and ripple the external community with this understanding. And you can only do that through a certain Yoruba entity that we have who is not an Orisha again, but his name is Orumila. We're in what age now in the zodiac? Aquarius. Aquarius. Right, which represents water, water and um, new beginnings. The the age of Aquarius is when those who may have been going through challenging times are making breakthroughs, and those who have been successful, un unworthily successful, are going mm -hmm. to see a decline. Right. So they say. So they say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait, we'll wait it out, you know, um, but certainly we know it represents that energy of the water bearer, okay, and in representing that energy of the water bearer, it also represents the energy of knowing. We see that the age of Aquarius is the age of knowing, right? Okay. It's all, like you said, he's always been there, well, not he's always been there, um, on his journey, just finding out what's going on, one of the things that keeps coming up for me is mental illness in our community, especially as it affects my sister. Mm -hmm. And I keep seeing this thing, uh, bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder. Sure. And I'm thinking, how not can you escape it? With, with everything that we've been exposed to and feeling, as church folks say, blessed and favored, mm -hmm. when we don't get that diagnosis, and it filters down to the children, it filters down all through the community, and it manifests in a whole bunch of different ways. And so my question is, how do we begin, for those of us who aspire to become healers, to address these issues with our children, because everything that we are talking about for the uninformed is hoodoo, voodoo, you know, all that witchcraft mm -hmm. stuff. How do we tap in in our community as we begin our work with people? Well, if you remember when I did the elongated bio? Yes. I started by telling you I started in women's prisons. That's right. Okay, <laughs> so I had two different worlds going on up into 2009. 
uh, but really no, 2010. That's when I put my first picture of myself even on the internet. And up until then, I was known as a rites of passage instructor. I've been doing that forever. Rites of passage, teaching drum, drum class, and teaching martial arts. Then I had my other crew that knew me as the Bible And I kept that one very quiet. Okay, but I used the intelligence that I learned from this side and I infused it into curriculums and lessons on that side. Okay, um, so we have to learn metaphysics and hypnosis. Okay. And the same way how we go into movie theaters and we look at commercials and we're hypnotized by the strengths that be, we have to use those same techniques and tools to unhypnotize, deprogram, and then rehypnotize our people. Okay, it, it, it ha you can't do it. We're not the, in the age of the samurai. All this coming straight, ah! You know what I'm saying? That's not it. You got to be like, um, we got to be real Oshunish in this time. And Oshun is a lot of times people just think Oshun is just about a lot of sex and hub and no Oshun is cloak and dagger she's James Bond I'm gonna kill you but you're never gonna know you're not gonna see it coming and you're gonna thank me <laughs> right exactly <laughs> sex with you. and then I'm just gonna be outside on a scaffold disguised as a, as a painter you know and drill a little tiny hole in a little tiny bullet you know so in this day and time honestly uh We've done the black power rhetoric thing. It's, it's rhetoric at this point. And the thing is, people become desensitized and numb through the ages. So you have to evolve. That's what Odo Dumare is. That's why you are God. Because once that era left, we were in the era of mass movement. And in the era of mass movement, Malcolm and Martin, you might have had a lot of, I mean, you didn't have the majority of the population in the streets because it was only about 12% of the black population that participated in it. So it's just like how it is now. Now, when you look at it, on eyes on the prize and all the documents it looked like it was all of us yeah, out there. Right. Most of us wasn't. Right. We just, you know, eating the same stuff and whatever. Right. So the thing is, once you understand that this is a small cellular movement, <laughs> you know, you gotta look at it like a military, you know, um, a military activity. There will think there will be things that you will put in front of your sisters that will activate their higher awareness <laughs> that they won't even know that they're doing. For instance, you got a lot, a lot now, like it's in style for young sisters to have naturals. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the weave thing, y'all know we, we with you. <laughs> Since you put the hat back on, I have to pick it in. <laughs> now, we know there's also the weave thing with the weaves down to the ankles. Mm -hmm. That's also a new style, too. Now, they're like the blatant weave. Now, it's not even about I'm hiding that. Yeah. Yeah. You know I got a weave. And it's, that's another statement. But that other group, we can now have certain kind of conversations with them because they're not as insane anymore. Because you can't have a, a sane conversation with somebody who's, who's sporting that. No offense to anyone in the room. I'm not even looking around, but whatever. You just be mad at me. Um, so the thing is, when you come into that understanding, you can start presenting things to them, but trying to go on this crusade about what you've been learning and what they need to get ain't the way. I'll give you a small example. I was doing a workshop a while ago with these young people I worked with. It was about 80 young people in the room, teenagers. And um, I was doing, I did this whole, it was a real nice presentation on media. And I did it from 1984 to 2014. Mm -hmm. How you are perceived by the world. Mm -hmm. So I broke it down. I did, you know, it's kind of video editing. And I showed them, like, took them through the 80s, through the corporate uh, ladder era. Mm -hmm. And I showed them, like, movies like uh, Trading Places, mm -hmm. you know, Secrets of My Success with Michael J. Fox. And we just went through, through different areas, different movies. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was the era. It yeah. was like, yeah, get my money, get in the corporate environment. Yeah. And you had Enron. And it was like, oh, no. Nope. Nope. You know, but um, they were they were pumped. You know what I mean? Because they saw like they saw the transition, especially like when I showed them trading places. Because that was funny to them. I was like, look at how they bet a dollar, how much they value your life, just to play with you and do experiments on you, and things mm -hmm. like that. And then bringing them straight through to 2004. I think we ended on we did the terminate. I don't remember where we ended. I forget. But. The point is, there was a sister in the room, and all the, all the youth, they're like, yo, da da da, they asked me all these questions. I mean, I'm at this point like two hours over, because they wouldn't leave. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I'm gonna give it to y'all, high school, whatever. I'm, I'll be here to the AM, I'm gonna give it to you. 
So a sister, <clears throat> love her, you know, no beef, nothing. But she was like, you know what you really need to show them, brother? You need to show them. It's an excellent movie. Um, she told me, she was like, Sankofa. You need to show them Sankofa, because that movie really touched me. And, did, did, did. and I was like, sister, I don't want to see no movie people flat tops and stuff like that. Like, we in another era now. Certainly, I love Sanko. It's one of my favorite movies. I still watch Roots. Shaga Zulu, as inaccurate as it was. Because <laughs> it was all off. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I still like it. You know what I mean? Because I just like the whole, we're going to get tough and kill these people. You know, um, I watch Mandingo, Drum, you know, uh, Putney Swopes, you know. But that's what moves me. You know, so we have to be sensitive to where our people are today. You know, and a lot of times what we bring into them is antiquated expressions and information. You still trying to bring to them the fact that we built the pyramids. So what? Who cares at this point? A ticket to Kimmet is about eleven $1 hundred dollars on the cheap. Mm -hmm. That's tell me I need a million dollars for for the average. So forget, let's forget that for a second. Cause I don't know how to build a doghouse. Let alone a pyramid. I can barely read. You're telling me I invented? Mm -hmm. Reading and that doesn't move me at this point because what you're trying to do is you're trying to instill self esteem in me, and I already got that because I think I'm the bomb with nothing. <laughs> I smoke weed every day. <laughs> I'm celebrating. What are you celebrating? Just being him. <laughs> a, a lot of my homies ain't make it this far. Yeah, but you eight years old. <laughs> Come on. So, you know, um. We got to really be sensitive to the new modalities that wake people up. And we're not really sensitive to that. You know, in terms of us dealing with the bipolarism, the reason why the women are more crazy than the men, and they are, y'all are. No. Yes. No. Okay, you're right. Yes. You're right, you're right. Yeah. You're insane. <laughs> and the men are crazy. Yeah. Because insanity means yes. I'm crazy, but I don't, I won't accept that I'm crazy, so I will do the same thing over and over again. How many brothers you meet who are down and out, you catch in the middle of doing something debaucherous, and they say, yeah, man, I know I gotta get myself together. You know, let me get 30 cents so I can go buy this Bumani some dope. But they'll tell you, they'll say, yeah, man, I used to study, I was personal by the God of Minister Farrakhan at one point, you know what I mean? Mm. Meanwhile, they're doing something dirty. Mm. They have their minds. That's the difference, that's crazy. And mm. sanity is, I dress like this because it just looks good. I don't do it because some you tell me about somebody, some plantation wench, and all that stuff. You tell me about that. I, don't, mm -mm. I do because I want. I don't. That's the insanity. You see, you're not even connecting to the truth in any shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. Now, why are the women insane and the men are crazy? Because the women represent the chalice. Mm -hmm. Okay, the chalice. The reason you put those cups on your shrine is because that cup represents the reception of, mm -hmm. of, of intuitive energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why in the age of Aquarius, we're coming into a place of knowing where we're now directly identifying with our intuition because Aquarius is the cup holder. We look at it because it's the water bearer, but you got to understand that the, the societal construct and makeup that's been created. The original image of that water bearer, that was Ptah. Okay? Ptah means opening of the mouth or opening. Okay? But he was also known in the Yoruba construct of it as Obatala. Okay, he was known in, in Rome as Jupiter. Okay, but that's who this individual was. He was also the potter. Okay, and he would shape human destiny on the, on the potter's will. He eventually, that job was taken over by Anpu, or who you may know as Anubis. Okay, so we had that individual who was opening up and pouring out knowledge to the world. But those greasy Greeks. So the Greeks come along and they now have this story of Gamenes. Anybody know the story of Gamenes? Not one person in this room? Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> it's all right. We all wrong at some point. Hopefully everything I'm saying today, next year, I'll be, be a complete contradiction. That's what I'm hoping. I want to be, I want to be a walking contradiction. So Gamenes was Zeus's lover. He was a young boy that he saw. Um, you know, so, yeah, he was um, by a river one day, and he used to love looking at himself. He was, a lot of people associate him with narcissists, no, right? No, no, no. Okay, but it was, yeah, Gamenes. Okay, okay. Okay. And Zeus saw him, and he was like, you know, 
that meat looks sweet. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. I gotta give me some of that. So he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap my thighs around that picture. So, <laughs> so, so he comes down and he rapes Japanese, but he takes him, he says, man, this booty's so good, I'm gonna take him up to Olympus with me. And I'm gonna tap that booty all the time. Not just one time, I'll make you immortal. And what he did was he devoted a planet to him. Now his planet is actually bigger than Zeus's wife's planet. Mm, that's a what does that tell you? <laughs> Come on now, we gotta learn the cultural context. It's important. Say it, say it one more time. Gamini's planet, the <clears throat> one that Zeus gave Gamini, oh. which we still study in astronomy. That's actually bigger than the planet that is named after and given to Zeus's wife. So it tells you that Greeks value the relationship between men and men over men and women. Exactly. There you go. Just cultural context. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have a term like agape love. Mm -hmm. You've heard of agape. Mm -hmm. Agape means the love between an adult man and a young boy. Mm -hmm. That's agape. If you if you go to church, they tell you it means unconditional love. That's the highest one. Yeah, because you didn't understand the cultural context. Mm -hmm. So when you just said, oh, it's the highest form of love, for who? <laughs> now, for some, that's okay. That's your thing. That's your society. Who am I to say anything? I don't live in that. I know, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I don't live in that. My ethnic origins say that my highest form of love is man, woman, child, the creation of family. That was always taught to me, Haru, Asir, and Aset. Okay? Yemoja, Obatala, Shango. That is the highest expression that I can reach in love. It's, by, it's a joint with someone to create an understanding through our battling of our genitals and then create one understanding that's unified and organized. That's, that's, that's the pinnacle. So, what was said was that what Gamines would do, Zeus had held a party, okay, and he had Gamines going around offering wine to all the individual gods. And what he was doing, he was pimping Gamines out because he was saying, look, that rectum is so magnificent that I want y'all to get some of that anus. So I'm going to picture it. So, picture it. No, my imagination is broke. <laughs> well, I'll fix it. I'm good at this. This, this is the part I like the most. <laughs> Drawing pictures. <laughs> so he would go around from the party serving each deity the cup that you see in the sign of Aquarius, where he's pouring out water. That's what that means. But originally, that cup represented the womb of intuition, which was owned by the feminine principle, mm -hmm. which was considered to be the highest expression of your love, to be able to share your information and knowledge coming from the womb of your intuition, mm -hmm. not share your gay boy mm -hmm. or, or your boy lover. I would say gay boy lover, but your boy lover, who you raped. So we're not even talking about this is consent. You raped this little boy, and now you toss him around. That was considered the highest form of this age and this time. So as you'll see by social con social construct, that energy rules this time in many senses. Yes. Okay. <coughs> we do our thing. People do their thing. It's all good. But we got to know the cultural context from which things spring from. You know, so that way we can understand what our maybe our next moves should be. So our next move in this season, it's not just the age of knowing, it's the age of the sharing of knowledge. This is why we're way over and I'm still talking and I have to drive three and a half hours to get back home. Mm. Because I'm obedient to the age of the time. That's more important than anything else. Because if I go against the age of the time, <clears throat> I might have to come back to this <laughs> hell hole. <laughs> no, you mean to <laughs> Yes. Earth the hell. I don't want to come back here. I mean, you don't think this, there might be someplace better? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I'm not on some spookism religious stuff when I say it. I'm saying that if I am the Lord of all worlds, 
why would I want to confine myself to one world? Unless I knew there was a lesson I had to go back and learn. So I want to get the lesson, get it down packed, and get up out of here. I don't want to stay in third grade forever. Because yeah. stuff that's in third grade, in all honesty, I don't, I'm not interested by it. If you put me in third grade today, I'll probably flunk everything. Because I don't study that anymore. I'm not interested in multiplication and cursive writing. We type now. Okay, none of y'all can write. I, I, if I go around and look at it, it'll probably be atrocious. Every yeah, last one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing some stuff on the distance happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because we're in a new paradigm. The walls of that reality have, have dissolved, and we said, I don't care, which is the highest expression of divinity when you leave a reality. Mm. I don't care. That's as, that's as high up as you go. You heard what they did that boy in, in uh, Missouri, right? Missouri. The one they killed. Which one? Three for four. Yeah. Good question. This was the one See how you said it, though? Yeah. You upset about it. You care, don't you? I got yeah. five of them at home. That, that has nothing to do with it. Because that's a mental attachment. That's the question I was going to ask. Is that the same as something? I got children. Yeah. I, I own a school and an orphanage. I own these children. I was there when the parents died. So I'm hit. So if I'm telling you you got a school and an orphanage, what do you think my my leg shackle is? I still care too. I still want to ride out. I'm still like, yo, mommy kidnapped his wife. That's why my mind thinks that they released his identity. Wow. We need to kidnap her. And if we send her back, send her back pregnant. <laughs> You see how my mind thinks? <laughs> you see? That's why I'm not my block really yet. Because I'm supposed to say, I don't care. I'm not at that point yet, but I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there because I don't care that much. I'm not marching in no rallies. And I'm not going to sacrifice myself. I've been down that road already. I'm not going to sacrifice my people who, for people who are still in love with being teen. Oh nah. Uh -uh. <laughs> So I, I, I'm getting there, you know? But as long as we still care and we have that attachment, there's a couple things we want to do. One of which is share the knowledge. Because I'm afraid you might get smarter than I will and then nobody will um, pay to come and listen to me. Then what am I gonna do with my life? I'm gonna have to do something else. I'm gonna have to allow the walls of my reality to crumble and do something different. But I'm attached to this identity as this master teacher that everybody loves listening to. And if I give you all of my information, you won't keep listening to me. So why about I just feed you little crumbs? And then I talk to you about mysteries. Well, how I learned mysteries? You gotta get initiated on Because you ain't ready for that information. That information is heavy duty. It's gonna cost you. But hey, tell you what, I'll hook you up. I won't let it cost you that much. But what am I still getting? Your power. You see? Or I could just crush that reality and just hear boom, take it, whatever. Because it was a time when elite people, the initiated, the priests, and the knowers of secret societies were the only ones that were allowed to have these activities and connections. But we're existing on multiple planes at the same time. So why would I allow your other existence on another plane to, to lay decrepit? That's not right. Because I'm also existing on that plane. So as I clean up this community, I'm cleaning up that community. When I leave up out of this shell, I want my spirit to be comfortable too. I don't want to be surrounded by niggas up there. <laughs> I do a lot of astral travel. I've been to the nigger rounds. <laughs> <laughs> niggas need a place to live. <laughs> right? Because we ain't got no place on earth for niggas. Where's nigger land? <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm think about it. Ain't no nigger land. We got France. We got, you know, Germany. We got Italy. There's no Africa. No such thing as that. You know, we have nations. We have Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Somalia, Burkina Faso. But where's nigga man? We gonna say Nigeria? <laughs> I know he's gonna try to go with this. Wait, that the Naga, the Naga's a serpent that exists up in the sky. And when you keep saying the word nigga, you're actually raising the Kundalini so that we can empower ourselves as a God on the planet. Come on, man. Knock it off. You know what energy I'm talking about when I say nigga? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the degenerates of our people. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those who are going to be cast away because they're detours. Detours. 
decoys. Yeah, everything I just said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to take my spirit and live in that. Yes, but I got a question. So, how what makes what makes them different from the ones who don't care? What makes a nigga the one the different from the one you when you're saying the people that don't care? Like when you're saying about oh, talking okay. to the young person about San Kofi and they say, well, they don't care about that anymore. But, we, but sometimes we see that same mentality is what creates that nigga down the line that, that you have to deal with one day. The nigga does care. That's the difference. The nigga cares about keeping it real. You see, and the nigga's ideology of keeping it real is every day I have to go out and figure out a different way to hurt you. So everybody can say I'm a real nigga. You know, so when I wake up in the morning and I'm sitting back and I'm blowing one back, I'm like, yo, what am I doing? I'm gonna do a caper today. You know, I'm gonna go rob the uh, check cashers. I'm, I'm gonna push some old lady in the elevator to take a, a pocketbook because I'm a real nigga. It's real out here. I gotta get this paper. You see? So they care and they're conscious. The difference is that they're living a durational lifestyle where they're just waiting for things to happen. For a response. The individual who says I don't care and I'm disconnected from this reality says there is another reality that I am concerned with. And it's not a durational thing where I'm waiting for the by and by. I'm inviting the by and by to me. You see? And I understand that whatever I do here is not going to signify any of my, my realism. How my realism, my power is obtained and signified is by my ability to connect my spirit to my soul. That's what makes me a real not. So even in this moment, I'm saying a lot of things that make make people say, oh, he wanted a new age cast and don't care about the community. He and that blissful, just forget everybody. So I could prove to you that I'm a real nigga. I could do that. I could show you Scott. Hey, we go on Google right now, I can show you police reports. I give you my other name. <laughs> I got a couple of them. <laughs> you know, it's not you gotta move around. <laughs> But that would prove to you that, yeah, he's a real nigga. He was, out, he was mixing up with cops. He got assault on a police officer. He got this, yeah, wow. What's it? It doesn't mean anything. Or I could sit here in humility with blue suede shoes on and, and just share knowledge and information. And as it's flowing, you saying, damn, will he stop? No, because the spirit is connected to the soul. Just, that's the realism, that's the myotic balance, that's authenticity. So there's a huge difference in that one is aiming for the earth and one is aiming for the heavens. You know. And when you're I got you. And when you're earthbound, you're functioning from the chakras, and that's where the emotions come from. When niggas, especially male niggas, they care too much because they're very emotional. They're very emotional because they have too much sex. It's not so much the sex, it's, it's the ejaculation. They constantly bust the nuts. Whether it's from their own hand or in whatever. And what happens is now they have an imbalance of hormones in their body. They're releasing all their testosterone. So when the cops come, who have all this testosterone because they work out and they're eating damn near raw meat and they got a gun and they're in the, in the, in the station house lifting weights. So they got all this testosterone, get off the corner. And you, all right, all right, all right. You're passive because you, you're just full of estrogen. And that's why you go home and you want to beat your woman up. Because women have difficulty in the same space sometimes. So if I'm coming with a female and a woman vibration because I've been busting all these nuts and I got all this estrogen, and me and you are in the same vibration, well, I'm bigger and stronger than you. So when it's a disagreement, I'm going to hit you. Because I'm functioning from a more emotional and feminine mentality. I'm emotional. And I'm, and I'm at, not at ease with that because I'm not a woman. So it's weird. It's like what women go through when they're having their menses. They're having melatonin, nighttime hormones, traveling through their blood during the daytime. So they become irritable. Well, it's the same thing that happens to the nigga class when they bust too many nuts. You know? Did, did I answer the question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I ain't gonna check. Listen, bad teacher. You know what I mean? I, I could get shot and then somebody come behind me, kidnap me, because they're going to come get me. I ain't, I ain't too long for this earth. I know that. Um, and then everybody's now the blank. That means all the stuff I dropped was worthless, dead information. It's not enough for me to show you how deep I am. I got to get you guys activated and empowered, not motivated. 
Screw motivation. Motivation's got you sitting in the hot basement. So we got that part. I need to get you activated. Um, Astro Trap. Yes. Okay, so what's the point? Is it to, I want to sneak peek what's over there. You know, is it, I want to see what they're doing around over yonder where you can't just jump to in your physical self. So, um, what would be the point? Excellent question. I, I love, no one's ever asked. Yeah. <laughs> cool question. Okay, the point of astral travel, if it's, let's take it to different places. And obviously for different people it has different points, different, different significance. As in like level wise, like tomorrow versus 10 years or mm -hmm. okay. I understand. What's the point of watching TV? Entertainment. Information. Or Information, depending on what you watch. Entertainment, watching. depending on what you watch, what channel you tune into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, TV was invented as an initiative to try to astral travel, astral project, more mm -hmm. specifically. That is why TV was invented. Um, the telephone was invented. It was said that uh, it was Edison. He wanted to um, communicate with ancestors that he, he felt existed within the magnetosphere. So that's how tele the telephone was invented. Mm -hmm. Because how is it that these Africans are doing it? We got to be able to create some technology that can emulate their spirituality. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the TV, it signifies the same reason why most people astral travel. They either want to project, you know, I want, so it might be something, so I want to check on my, my children. You know, I, I go on my children's dreams all the time. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> what's up? What's up? You know, or sometimes you may be doing spiritual work on somebody and you got to tighten them up a little bit. So you go into their dreams at night. Yo, you need to dismiss that case against my nephew. You know, I'm being airy night. You know, so it might be that. So there's a projection aspect to after astral travel. But then the other aspect where we're exploring, which is kind of what you're speaking about, is only for the purposes of learning. The astral planes are classrooms. Mm -hmm. When you see them as anything else but classrooms, you're wasting your time, you're meandering. Okay? You don't want to try to strive for higher levels in astral travel because that's a waste of time. At the highest level, you go back home. Mm -hmm. So it ain't about the astral planes. The astral planes, the, this, this is, this is a form of astral plane. Okay? So it will fade away. It's for the purpose of decoding, you know, looking at things around the symbols and things like that. The astral plane is no different. Okay? Um, but you may travel at times to speak to entities and people who are stuck in those planes. A lot of your ancestors are stuck on the astral planes. Especially like your family. I'm going to show you one that I went to before to speak to someone. And where I learned this. Um, I had an aunt, Zephaniah. And uh, not Zephaniah, Viola. And I went to contact her once. And we, when I got there, we were sitting on the church pew. And we just looking ahead. I'm like, you know, um, Viola, what's, what's good? What are we doing? And she said, we wait for the kingdom to return. She's still waiting for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see? Wow. Forever. Stuck. Stuck. So I had to do some things. You know, but the thing is, so based on what we're, as above, so below, based on what we're doing here, we can get an idea. Now, your, your, your job is when you leave here is to break out of the astral plane. You don't want to go to an astral plane. That means you're stuck in a human reality and thought cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, beyond the human reality and thought cycle is that place that I can't think about because it's beyond my, my cognition, my reasoning capabilities. Some call it heaven. In the Bible, they called it Uranus, or Anu. Or Anu is Uranus, or, or Anus. So that place is, is the place where the soul returns to. In between that, you have places where the spirit goes. And remember what we said about the spirit. It's not eternal. It's temporal. You know? So, um, astral projection, it's just to go learn stuff. If you want to learn something about animals, you go to an astral plane where there's nothing but animals, maybe nothing but a dog. Because remember, each species, each class of what we can identify in the world has a spirit associated with it. So, dolphins, there's a, there's a spirit, a collective spirit of dolphins. Mm -hmm. And then each dolphin has their own individual spirit. But you can go to that astral plane and deal, nothing with, deal with nothing but dolphin spirit and learn something about what the dolphin represents in this plane. So that's the point. You ain't got to do it, ultimately. Um, we get into it, when, usually when we first come into consciousness because it's the easiest thing to do. Um, you don't need initiations or whatever to actually travel. And you do it when you sleep at night anyway. 
so it's like real excessive. But um, it's not necessary. After a while, you ain't gonna want to do it. Mm -hmm. you know. If the emanations, the emanations are all indifferent, then one of the signs that you are you have it uh, embodied at a higher level is your indifference. One of the signs of you embodying your Risha at a higher level is your indifference. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. When you come to a place of indifference about the going zones of the world, you have surpassed the Orisha because the Orisha express themselves also through your emotions, mm. your energy and emotion. So when you have ceased to have energy and emotion around certain subjects, you become indifferent to that particular thing. Like war is one for a lot of us. We don't care. We say we care. Because it ain't here. You know, so it, it really depends on what area that you're becoming indifferent to. But ultimately, it's that Obatim concept where it's like, I'm indifferent to all of it because I ain't, I ain't really here. Right. And I'm seeing it as a game. Right. You know, so once I can see the world as a video game and I connect more to my the player, yeah. then I see, oh, I've had three lives I've already went through. I got one left. Get it right. You know, or I'm over here battling someone who I think is my problem. We're just playing a video game together. We're actually friends. And this battle that we're going through is pulling out the highest aspects of me. So I need to have that battle. I need to care. So in the same instance, if I get into a situation with an individual, if someone smacks me in the face, I'm not going to say I don't care. You didn't really smack me. You smacked the hologram. <laughs> you know, for a split moment, I'm going to have an out-of-body experience. That <laughs> sounds crazy, right? <laughs> but that's really what it is, because I, I, I need to. Because I'll kill you. Because I, I have murder in my heart. I think like a murderer. So I have to pull back for a second and say, oh, you should have just got smacked. Not I got smacked. No, how's the soul? We good? 42 declarations of my heart? We're still perfect? Okay, so that means this isn't that important. Now I'm going to respond on a human level, but I do not need to warp my path because I care about what just occurred. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to stay in control so that my destiny is not warped. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I'm going to see if I can articulate this. Um, earlier you mentioned the mm -hmm. and I was wondering how it symbolizes a throne. Yes and how things are being used against us for the betterment of others. Mm -hmm. How is this phenomenon of twerking, twerking connected with everything? I mean, it just seems like it's an explosion of it where it's never uh, occurred before mm -hmm. in history. And now it's just like all over the place. Everybody's doing it. Uh, stripper classes, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make that connection because it's, you know, that's our throne. How is that being used against us um, in this projection? Mm -hmm. Well, if good. that makes any sense, it makes sense. It's a good okay. question. I will say, for the for, for the most part, twerking is not new. That's no, no, yeah, we did that back when. Oh yeah. Um, Men, we like to see y'all move your hips. Cool, do it. We like it. You know, it's it's a part of the sexual expression. Yeah. It's like y'all like to see construction work. You like to see us work with our hips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we hurt ourselves. <laughs> you know, right? Whatever. But it's hard work. It's harder than that dancing y'all doing. You know, it's trade. Uh, so um, the thing Take is, <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, just no mean, furry thong. I ain't built for that. So you know, no furry thong. <laughs> oh, you remember? Oh, yes. you remember? Oh. So the thing is, when you're dealing with the, the aspect of twerking, are we desecrating the temple by doing such? Some would say that. Some would say that it's a reintroduction of the explosion of feminine energy, mm -hmm. which could be directly connected to the explosion of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people have real trouble with, well, and it's just a perspective that a lot of people disagree with. When we look at 
that form of sexual activity, especially when it comes to men or even when it comes to women, um, what's clear is that the feminine energy in some shape or form or fashion mm -hmm. is coming to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta look at the history of this place and look at how long it's been oppressed in this country. So now, no matter what, you squeeze something long enough, it's gonna slide out the sides, it's gonna pop up, it's gonna do all kinds of things, and it may come out the sides and pop up in a form which it wasn't originally. Mm -hmm. So you may have men now walking around acting like women because that feminine energy is still going to come out. You may have women walking around acting like men because they're pushing themselves to the forefront saying the feminine energy is still going to come out. So just just a theory, okay? Um, and it's not subject to how I may feel about it. It is what it is, okay? Um, so twerking is also not subject to how I may feel about it. I have a daughter, you know, I don't, we're not doing that. That's that. You keep your energy suppressed, you know, <laughs> until such time, <laughs> you know. Um, but there is a cosmic thing that's happening. Now, my personal feeling on this is that it's just a big distraction. Okay, it's not good. Who gives a, you know what I mean? Like, okay, they twerking. Like, who's twerking? And they dancing like like African women. Hey, what well, you mean? Mm. Molly Cyrus, okay. Ew. Mm. <laughs> that old little flat, tiny uh. flat jack. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to see that mess. You know what I mean? So, like, because when that incident happened, people were asking me to decode it. I said, come on, man. <laughs> what's this? ISIS. ISIS. Yeah, what's up with it? Um, you know, well, since since you're decoding. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, yeah, I wasn't Egypt, decoding. Syrian, oh, Syrian, 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 Syrian. We're talking about feminine energy and, you know, and I was just wondering, how did it go from being Eastern from being a sail to Isis? And why? I would give it the same explanation. You know, again, it's that, that unleashing of that feminine principle. That's, that's now being called for. And I want everyone to be clear that when the spirit expresses itself and has a desire to evolve and move to something, a lot of times we misinterpret it. Mm -hmm. So we'll move in that direction, but with our jacked up, corrupted mentality. So not everything is good, in a sense, in, 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 that, in that sense of that principle. So just like you'll see society using certain things, and whatever society, remember we set the tone for everything. Whatever we're doing is, we're the Illuminati. Because when you leave, if you think anybody going to know you was talking about what you was just talking about, you know what I mean? And then, you know you got all them secret hands, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that. I can't do it. I'm afraid. You know, um, yeah, you do the wrong one, and boys come down on you. You know, I taught in, in high school. A lot of gangs, and I was like, don't do that to me, man. I ain't going to remember it. Then we're going to have a problem. <laughs> just, you know, that's it. Plus, they don't wash their hands. So there's an expression of um, that feminine energy that's going to come out, but a lot of times the world, remember, the Satan or Set is the, is the deity of materialism. Set will always reproduce what Osir or Osiris produces, but he will emulate it in his form and materialism. So basically, Satan always makes a fake copy of what God produces. Mm -hmm. So if there, is a, if there is a spiritual movement that is bringing or set back on her gotcha. throne, mm -hmm. gotcha. Satan's going to say, I'm criminal. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's what seems like. You, gotta look, you could look at it for its decoding value, but then it can be a distraction because it's like, no, 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 okay, yeah, I got you, but whoa, what, what was that a byproduct of? Exactly. Because... Certain people remember there was a report that came out years ago that said that humans, our DNA was most closely select, um, closely related to the pig, right? Yeah. Yeah. What human, first of all, and what pig? Because this pig, this pink pig, is like this white chicken. Mm -hmm. The black pig in Haiti is very different. There you go. The black pig was actually the pig that was the patron of Osiris's temple in Kemet. Not the same thing as the genetically modified pink pig, or the genetically modified white chicken, or the genetically modified... Okay, so um, in our understanding of that, sometimes we kind of have to get to the root, you know, to the root understandings of things. And um, we can get very distracted by looking at the, the, the other aspect. So when they said, 
we're more closely related to animal DNA. What that said to me is, first of all, you're not talking about me, first of all. And second of all, what you're telling me is that means I can easily train you. <laughs> because you are very easily programmed because you have animal DNA and I have dominion over animals. <laughs> That's how I take it. <laughs> so um, a lot of times when we're seeing things that are happening on that side, we neglect the power of our ancestors to whisper in their ear and say, go this way, go that way, call them nigga. You see? Because we never ask ourselves, what the hell is a nigga? We really think about it. There were other words we would call them in the plantation, buck, big strong ones. You know, uh, shine, self-explanatory, right? Coon, raccoon, dark thing and all. Wait, we can really trace, you know, why these words, Nigga doesn't even make sense. But why do we keep that one? Mm. You see? So we sometimes we neglect the power of the Egon. We talk about them. We talk about them and how they, they the ancestors are moving and the ancestors are angry. This is how they move. They move by reprogramming the animals on the planet. That's why whenever they have superheroes, they're always either part machine, Iron Man, Robocop, you know. Or they're part animals, Spider-Man, whoever, Hawkman. I mean, they got an animal for every, for everyone. Because what they're saying is that in order for us to achieve what you guys have naturally, Superman, mm -hmm. Batman, Intelligence, Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. she's Amazon. Mm -hmm. You know, in order for us to achieve what you have naturally, we have to infuse ourselves with a system of bestiality mm -hmm. and cybernetics. Mm -hmm. That's how we become you. Programming. So is this a matter of balance? You have it here, so in some ways it has to be balanced out. It's not good or evil, it's just is. Tell me the here and the there. I have it here and it balances there. Tell me the two places. Well, mm -hmm. you have ISIS over here, then you have uh, duplicate, uh, sort of like a bizarro. Nah because Europeans don't balance out our African entity. No, Europeans, they strive to be our African entity yes. in the form of religion and political mm -hmm. agenda. So the balancing of, of Orset coming onto the throne mm -hmm. will be us, the, the, the couple of men who are in here. It's us coming that back and being reassembled. The balancing is the playing out of the mythology. That's when we find those thrones to sit back on, all those women to get with, who say, brother, you got some real good ideas. And we say, yeah, but anybody can listen to me. I, you know, two time loser, I mess around time going back to the pen. Nah, you know what, I believe in you. And she starts to reconstruct our consciousness mm -hmm. and reassemble the 14 pieces. Mm -hmm. Because she got on her throne, so now she's gonna say, we gotta balance this out. Mm -hmm. Or say, you gotta, you gotta come and be the Lord of the Underworld again, because that's where we at. But in order to do that, I'm going to reassemble you. <coughs> now, of course, the Johnny Come Latelys, they've been studying you longer than you've been studying you. So they, mm -hmm. they're watching this. Mm -hmm. they're seeing, they saw Florida Evans when she came forth and said, Oh, doggone Yemo Shah. She comes forth. We get the Aunt Jemima Bible. I mean, Bible. We even get the Mammy Oprah. She ain't nothing but big Mammy. I don't care how you feel about her. You know, she probably didn't even read. So we get those energies coming. Yeah, I don't care if it, she's a mammy. Mm. Okay, but she represents that, that mother, that big, dark, big breasted, big booty, maternal energy coming back on the planet. So we'll look at it, we'll get offended. You know, why Oprah got them contacts and eyes and, you know, this and that and that. Oh, uh, Florida Evans, man, she kept them in the ghetto. You know, and, and Aunt Jemima, that's offensive, got the rag on the head. But there's another story that's being played out here that you gotta look at. And I'm not saying accepted, like, Oh, racism is cool because it's my <laughs> eyes. <ride. laughs> but I'm saying you have to look at both sides and see when your ancestors are working. Mm -hmm. That's a part of rising to the I don't care moment. Because mm -hmm. you see what's really happening. Like, first of all, I'm not going to sit here and riff about something I can't change anyway. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. Let me look at the aspect of it that's for me. Mm -hmm. And every single time, if you're consciously aware, you're going to see that that aspect is always to your good. Every time, it's going to be to your good. 
not because you're making it that, but because the universe has a natural propensity, propensity towards evolution. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the wave of evolution and you're trying to evolve, anything that happens, you're going to have a spot in there. So that's my answer to that. That bullet that I have, I don't know if you raised it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you talk about evolving. Is Africa evolving right now with this condition? Evolving? No. Because it's not, everything is evolving. So we can't, certain things are evolving at a higher rate because if, if I use this example of time, the snake. In Bodum we have Dambala. And Dambala represents our, our evolution and our DNA. Um, in Europe we have Oshun Mare. And you have the head of the snake, which of course is the smallest part. Then you have the body of the snake. And the body is usually coiled, so it's thick. It's big, it's massive, it's hard to explore. The head is small, okay? So right now, the head of the snake of consciousness for, for melanin dominant people is in America. And I'm telling you, as someone who I'm closely acquainted with the continent, I own land there, I own homes, I own businesses, it ain't there. So you think you're gonna go back and you're gonna see people dancing mm. and drumming, <laughs> you know, that's not gonna happen. All the conscious people are here. So the head of the snake is here. So what happens is, as the head moves, the body moves. So if we want to resurrect anything great in Africa, you got to resurrect Osiris here. It is said that Osiris resurrects in the West. Yes. Okay? Osiris is the Irish, the first eye. So he rises here in the West. This is when, when the final showdown mm -hmm. comes. We talk about, yeah, when this white man get off the planet, and eat it. it happens here. Mm -hmm. That's why we're the ones who are grasping onto this consciousness. That's why we're the ones that have a romantic view of Africa. We think it's so great, but sometimes that's good because we aspire to that greatness. Now, a lot of times when we go to visit, it's like, oh, man, everybody's Christians. <laughs> you know, you know, that's on the continent. You know, everybody's Christians. So the thing is, um, we find out, wow, all the people who are into metaphysics and that level of even when you're dealing with the Orisha, the people who are digging into it and, and looking outside of their locality to give themselves the totality of their spiritual understanding. Not just looking for one tradition to encompass the total of their spiritual understanding, but understanding I have to look at the entire globe because I'm a global citizen, mm -hmm. that full diaspora, to get the full totality of my spiritual experience. Those people all live here. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying don't go back to the continent, because I am. Go, go back and get your... Yeah, I'm just saying another one. Go back and get your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> go back and, and reclaim your land. Go back and teach your family. But the snake head should never turn back on itself to service the, the back of the coil. Because then it's just going in circles. Doing nothing. The snake head should move forward, and then the body will go, oh, because over there, they want to be like us. So they're looking to us to give the model. You see, so when we become more degenerate, they become, you go to, you go to, to, to Lagos. Mm -hmm. I swear, if you fell asleep and woke up in Lagos, you think you're in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dressed the same, they talk the same, the swag is the same, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just as busy, you know, you got to be just as cautious with your goods, you know, it's, so they're, they're emulating the prototypes of American ghettos. So those of us who are the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, who are here in the West, we have to resurrect that energy. So is Africa evolving? It's evolving as long as we evolve, but um, as far as it, like Phelan said, being the center of the universe, it is the center of the planet and everything like that, but that's not where the highest vibration is at this point amongst the people. Now, when we go, you'll have totally different experiences. When you do the work that you do here, because everything here is working against you, you can feel it when you go to meditate. You hear all the craziness. You go there, it just starts to flush. You know, you'll have nightmares, you'll cry. All the first couple of days, you'll just be crying and having nightmares. It's coming to the surface. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's what happens. You know, when you do a detox, the toxins, you get pimples sometimes. The toxins come up to the surface, you know. So um, Africa is a very important part of this movement and this work that we're doing. But we can't go to Africa as beggars. Ooh. You know, you gotta you gotta go in power. So when you go there, you let people know, look, man, I ain't coming in as a beggar, so don't beg me for nothing. 
Now I will employ you and I will empower you to do things. We could do things together. But if you come as a beggar, oh, Omo Wally, don't get that Omo Wally thing out of your head. The child has returned. Get that out because nobody's waiting to embrace you. What you're going to have at the airport is people trying to give you a taxi ride and try to get some money out of your pocket. That's what's awaiting you when you get off the plane. And it's going to be that until you get back on the plane. Okay? So if you come empowered and you come with your strength and your spiritual knowings, <laughs> you know. I was going to add to that. It's not just Africa. It's really any yeah. other diaspora, Jamaica. Yeah. Italy. I was really surprised to hear somebody telling me they want me to go back and teach Hindu in Haiti. Right. And I'm thinking I was going back to Haiti. To, to get it. To get the real stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing it because if you don't have to go to Africa, go to Haiti, go to the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty <laughs> around here too that needs the help, not just all over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we spread all over the place, but you got to you gotta put Africa underneath your feet. If you evolve, you don't even have to go back. Not that I suggest, but if you evolve genetically and energetically, those who are in your bloodline will evolve automatically. Mm -hmm. All my aunties got locks. Now they go to church, <laughs> you know, they still in church, they still doing it, they dumbness and all that, but... They got locks. When I, I got my, my locks years ago, all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> now all of them have locks. Every last one of them. And some of them now are coming off the court. I ain't said a word. Nothing. I never went there and spoke about anything because I could. Can I really say what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You know, so whenever they ask me, well, can what's your book about? It's just about like African history. Like you ain't gonna read it anyway, so I'll tell you <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell you what it's really about because then I can't stay here when I you know, this, I have people hotels now. You know, so but because I just focused on my evolution instead of going back and getting all my all my cousins and whoever, everybody's coming up now. Yeah. I got another cousin, he's last time I went, um, we was building on Dr. York. He was like, Yeah, Doc this I'm studying Islam now. We had no conversations about this. You see? So when you evolve, those in your line will come along with you, little by little. You know? Yeah, um, you mentioned uh, Rick James projecting uh, Cyrus Energy. Yeah. You said Teddy Pendergrad. For sure. And then you mentioned your brother, uh, Dr. York. Teddy Pendergrad is Dr. York projecting. Uh, mm. I don't know if anybody studied his stuff, but it just seemed like it was just uh, unbelievable. What he, what he brought to us. So mm -hmm. I was just curious if you take on that. And then uh, I got another question. Sure, sure. How do we begin to self-actualize? Okay. Um, well, uh, Dr. York, he started off more as a Shangoic energy and went to a room mm -hmm. Okay, the law of rain. And a lot of the stuff he said, I'm an alien and all that stuff like that, was crazy but was accurate. Um, we, But we're all aliens. We are the exalted ones from heaven. That's what the word alien means. Ali, An. So, um, the issue is never, we always ask, well, how, how do white people create it? Forget that. You better figure out how you got it. <laughs> this is their home. Leave them alone. It's not your home. Yeah. You the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the cancer inside of the machine. Eating it from the inside out. You're Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's the energy he brought, but he brought the energy also of that leader that brought that knowledge. That's why he had to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not supposed to have leaders right. anymore. You know, um, now I have a, a good brother I know who was actually incarcerated with him for a little while. So when they first brought him into classification, like he walked by himself, you know, and um, they got to have a good dialogue and, you know, he shared some things and he was like, I'm here to teach. So he's raising up a whole new Wabian nation in the jail. So now they got him underground because of that. So he took him for maybe a regular. You got to go way underground. You know, you can't visit him anymore. But um, so what he represented was the same thing Khalid Muhammad represented. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Mm -hmm. No more leadership. I know. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that. Um, we have to be self-led and self-managed. So those who are coming and posturing themselves as such and doing an excellent job, I don't subscribe to Dr. York's doctrine pretty much at all. You know, and I've read his tablets and I, eh, I'm not. 
but we're, we're in a place now where we have to be self-led, we have to be self messiahs and self saviors So all those who are coming forth with that energy of the black leader are being taken out, one way or another. So you really shouldn't be posturing yourself as a leader of anything, you know. And on top of that, as big as that organization is, and as many celebrities that came out of that organization, no one is paid for somebody to break them out of jail. Mm. So you see how our people treat its, its leaders, mm. treat them like dirt. Okay, they're usually taken down by their leaders. I mean, their family. They took them down to some, you know. Um, so that's the deal with Dr. York. Okay. Um, now, in terms of, and again, if you want to study his stuff, or I mean, he's got some some good information, you know. Um, yeah, he's got good information. In terms of self-actualizing on your own, the first step again is to approach the spiritual entities in the world that surround you from a, from the perspective of a master. Self-actualizing, the word actualize or actual comes from the, the Greek word energia. Energia is where we get the word energy. Okay, so. To actualize the self. Now, who is the self? We spoke about the I earlier, right? The I is that soul entity, that characterless entity. So basically, I'm actualizing or I'm giving energy to that en that entity. Self-actualization is giving energy to the I. Okay? I know we shy away from I because we're told that that's a product of ego. But you have a spiritual ego and then you have a human ego. Both are necessary. You don't want to do a completely away with ego. If ego is completely done away with, you would never say, I have a purpose in life. A unique purpose. And I can't be in your lane. Because then now I'm in your way. You see? So you give energy to the eye. The first way you give energy to the eye in this, in this day and time is again by coming into the energy of thought. Okay, we had, a, a, again, a Greek um, archetype, Thoth, who was Tehuti. Thoth is where you get the word thought. So it was understand that in this age of knowing that Thoth was the one, if we were to say there was a God, right, it would be Thoth. Okay, the energy of all knowing is currently the energy that's ruling the planet. So to act now, the energy of all knowing, or Rumula, is an aspect of your Ori. Odumari has three emanations, Wumila, Obatala, and Oduduwa. These exist above Arisha. So now, of course, we're still in the Kali Yuga age, which is the age of Oya. But the Kali Yuga age is only for, that's, that's from the lower now down. From the upper now up, it's all about a Wumila. So what that means is you should be studying your thoughts the same way you study your religion and more. Because that should be your religion, the thoughts that come to your mind. Okay, that's the, that's where we begin the process of self-actualizing. Okay, when we skip beyond that, you're just going to keep running in circles. Master Farah got you. Farah Muhammad started to show us a little bit of that. Because when you saw the images of him, he was holding a book. So that was like a little hint. Yo, the next age that's coming is the age of the scholar, academics, study. But it's the thoughts that you already have intrinsically that have been deposited over the ages by your ancestors that are now coming alive. Those thoughts are what we call Arisha. Okay? So now what you have to study is the source that the Arisha emanate from, the thought projections. That's how you start self-actualizing. Get, get out of the need and the desires to um, learn gods for the purposes of using them as a tool. Um, you cannot disassociate your actualizing from history. That's one of the challenges that we have sometimes. We don't want to study things in cultural context, nor do we want to understand what we're supposed to know. If I study historically what the world has, the conclusions that the world has come to, then I have the right to claim that as my own conclusion because it's in my blood. My only challenge now is to figure out how to get it. I don't have to study how they built the pyramids. I say I think about it. The same way you go outside right now and your car is broke down. Dope fiend comes along. Hey, I fix this car for thirty seven dollars. Right? But usually don't they tell them usually tell you the price till they fix it. You're a mechanic? Nope. So then how did you know how to fix my they're gonna fix it though? Right? When they want that hit, they can do 
Danny, man. <laughs> it's impressive, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Because, first of all, I'm staying in that world. You know, most of these drugs got a high content of melanin in them. That's why we're the only ones who really get addicted. Like crack. Yeah, white people took crack in the 80s. Like, yeah, I tried it. <laughs> you know, I was a recreational practice. Us, one time. Because that melanin. So when they're staying at that vibration, I hate to say, I know it sounds messed up, but they're staying at that vibration and they have a desire to get back up there. What happens is all these amazing knowings come to them. They'll look at your car and start seeing it as an organism. Because remember, all of European technology is built off of our spirituality, and most of our spirituality is built off of bodily function and organ. So they'll look at the car and see lungs and liver and but all right, go around and try it. Anyway. So yeah, thought, man. <laughs> thought is king. Somebody had their hand up. I did, but I think you answered partially uh, in terms of studying our thoughts um, and the source of our thoughts. So what exactly are we, what are some of the guidelines for the study? Like what are some of the two or three things that we could focus on as we're studying? What are we looking for? Um, You're looking for your natural and normal thought process. And what I mean by that, if I tell everyone to meditate right now, what are the first things that come to mind? Now, what you're taught in meditation is to get those away. You know, clear your mind. Why? It's my mind. It's telling me where I'm at. It's my compass. So what you want to start doing is paying a lot of attention to the first things that come to you in your stillness, no matter what they look like. It could be, man, I just keep thinking about cheese all the time, man. Every time I go to meditate, I think about cheese. When somebody may say, you need to dig into that half energy. Because obviously you're having visions of the sacred cow. You know, you need to start studying the Milky Way. Because half the head of the root, governs the Milky Way. You know, and the Milky Way is where we have the Sirius B. So that's where home is. But I just think about cheese. Yeah, but you see, if you follow your thought process, it will lead you back to God. Mm -hmm. Thought is king in this time. So whatever it is, what it, it's almost like we be getting we get notices of this when we look at the freestyle movement. Young people, they just freestyle. And I used to teach a class on music. And I used to do this thing. We had a freestyle site for the beginning of the class. I would just throw a thought out. You know, oranges, abuse, rape. And then you have to freestyle on it. So now what happens is you're going to take that word and you're going to trace it back. And it's going to take you to source. Anything you pick is going to take you to source because everything that's present on the planet right now has original consciousness within it. My job as a priest is just to tap into the consciousness, extract it, and use it for something else. But why can't you do it? You don't have to go to Nigeria like I did to do it. You can do it now. So the things, I got you. Some of the things you want to start on again is start studying your thought process, where it goes. Okay, um, you want to start looking at the history of your ethnic origin group. But don't do it for the purposes of identifying with that group. In all honesty, A-F-R-I-C-A-N, we need to stop identifying with that. That's a geographical location. I didn't say A-F-R-I-K-A-N or A-F-R-A-K-A-N. We understand that that has a conceptual meaning. But as long as we keep identifying with the continent, then we'll, we'll miss the global consciousness that we develop. Okay, so you want to start looking at your even your migratory patterns of your people. What you'll find is you start studying your own people's migratory patterns, you're going to start even understanding why you live where you live. There were studies done on this years ago in, in the U.S. and they showed that when they did like these genetic testings, the groups of black people who migrated to Chicago at one time, the majority of them were from certain regions in Africa. The ones who I think they also did South Carolina. <coughs> they did Alabama, and there was one other place I can't remember. But they found that these people who migrated around the same time, they were all from the same nations in Africa. So you want to, again, we already got it. And that's why you don't want to leave. Because there's a cosmic pulse that you will begin to vibe to. That's what you want to start tuning in on a bit more, where things are going cosmic. Okay? And your perception of that is going to be different for the individual because we have all have our own character. You know, so that's another place that you want to start at. Okay. 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 Okay.
So I am so grateful for, especially the speech you just gave, because I am, I don't even want to say I'm struggling. I think my mind is made up about this whole balance and peace between the teacher and the student and okay. feeling like some energy around being ripped off. Mm. Um, but not so much that is not being free to think. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, or being having that the energy of thinking be squelched and resisting that. Mm -hmm. And trying to make some trouble for me about that, but I'm not having it. And so that balance, you know, between, okay, is this really my teacher? Is this really my way? Sure, because I can think and I can read and I can make certain assumptions. Mm -hmm. What do I need from the spirit <coughs> to help me on my way? When I say that, I'm talking about specific rituals, specific healing practices, those kind of things, so that I can elevate that which I aspire to. Okay. Here's the thing, though. You're a poor student of that teacher, so get out from underneath that teacher. Okay. Okay. You are torturing that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay. Just get from underneath it. That teacher is for somebody who needs that level. You don't need that, so now you are squeezing your adult self into a child's seat. And then you complaining that the seat keeps tipping over every time you lean forward and get something on the floor. Why you don't put no bigger seats in there? Because this is not the design of what I'm presenting with right now. You asking for something more than I'm able to give you. If you are already coming in desiring modalities of healing and so forth and so on, most likely you already know them. So the only thing that's going to happen in that scenario with that teacher, no strategy against teacher, I don't know that individual, I'm not trying to make them lose students or whatever. The only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to have to break yourself to become a student. You know you ain't going to do that. We already discussed that. Exactly. That's the only answer at this point. You're going to have, because everything in you is saying, I've outgrown this in this situation, and maybe the original question that I have to ask of this person has already been, been answered. I'm not supposed to be studying under this person right now. So if that's the case, in order for me to convince myself of that, I'm going to have to break myself and break what I feel. And there is a time to break yourself and to be humble. But then it's a time to be the oddball and go with your own explosion of energy because you can suppress it otherwise. You see, my students do all kind of weird stuff. They think I don't be known, but I know. <laughs> you know, they, they join other stuff while they're with me. I could care less. I don't care about no adults doing it. Who cares? I'm just saying that. Okay, so let me explain this to you. I'm only here teaching you, one, to fulfill my purpose, and two, so that you'll teach children. I don't give a crap about what y'all do. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody does. All right, I don't. I'm not impressed by the magical feats of adults. You're supposed to be able to do something. You're a freaking adult. You've been here for 20, 30, 40 years. I would expect some type of magic, a bit magical abilities at this point. It's the babies. If you're not teaching this to the children or giving it to the elders so that they don't get stuck in a damn church pew for the next millennia, then I don't give a F about you. You see? So I'm only teaching for that purpose, for us to teach those who are affecting policy on both ends of the spectrum, which is really the ancestors. So you coming into that environment, you... You're, you're not getting what you're supposed to get, and you're not giving what you're supposed to get. It would be more advisable for you to pull back, and you decide how you negotiate your understanding and contracts with the universe first, and then determine what that needs to look like in the form of a teacher, if it needs to be a spiritual guide, or if you need to just step to a teacher and say, listen, I don't want to be under you, but how much would it cost me to get some of what you got? And that allows you to keep your autonomy. I've done it. You know, I've gone to Nigeria, like, because people see me and, oh, you know, especially American. Oh, you need to come here and be, no, because you think I'm going to be sending money back every month. No, tell you what, yo, here's, you know, 3,000 naira, which ain't nothing. I want one lesson. Just tell me how to, you know, revive this or do whatever. I'm out. So sometimes it's that, too, when you need to be straight up. But obviously... 
from the entire time we've been here, we've been talking about this teacher. Hey, right, everybody, come on. <laughs> Back, so she can take it. You say, Have I? <laughs> yeah, just tell her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you brought this individual into our space. That means it's not sitting well with you. It's not. It is not. So just, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, let it go. As teachers, people come and go. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had so many students pass through, and sometimes they sneak in and like, I don't care. I really don't. And I, I mean, I don't mean that to sound, say, you know, to try to sound mean, but I'm fulfilling my life purpose. And my life purpose is not intertwined with yours. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will come just to get a care package. Some people will go to get a question answered. Can I vibe with you guys energy? Can I vibe with the teacher's energy? You know, and if it doesn't work with me, chances are, so, you know, why don't you just to do your thing for a little while? You know, and it doesn't mean you fight, get out of here. We can still, we're still cool. But there's something that you have that I might suppress. Just by maybe my opinion, not even what I teach you. You may see something I do and be like, wow, that's cool. I like the way he does that. I want to do it like him. And that may mess you up. And I don't want to do that. You know, sis, if you want to text it, feel free to. Um, but I'll just keep going until you all no longer appreciate. Uh, appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing with you. Go ahead, sis. Um, I had a question about the thing doing. The um, thing doing? Yeah, you said go do your own thing. Oh, okay. okay. So, uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, thing yeah. doing. Um, um, I would, I need to take a trip to okay. Benin. I think I need to take a trip to Benin, so I'm going to take this trip. And um, the likelihood that I'll go by myself is high. And by myself, I mean without my godmother. Um, I've already initiated. I think I've gone as far as I can go with her um, mm -hmm. in a voodoo sense. Sure. Which is not very far because her basis is Arisha and probably... Um, I will soon too. Mm -hmm. But how, because I still have a certain amount of whiteness in me. <laughs> and when I go, I'm trying to unpack, but it's going to still be in there. Mm -hmm. And so I know that. But how do you suggest, because um, I've only been once, I was in Ghana, but how do you suggest to conduct oneself? What kind of box or putting yourself out of the box do you go and conduct the business of? And you just said, I'm willing to give you this, teach me X, Y, and Z, but I don't know what I need to get on my, you know, with my voodoo and lineage. Mm -hmm. um, so what I don't need to do is support that whole witch. I got to <laughs> you know, that I have. And if I can do it, then fine, whatever, but I got to do it right here. I feel you. So how, what is that initial relationship looking like? What is the... Um, I guess my parameters, just some general guidelines, um, something that I can expect or a way that I can conduct myself. So when I go, I certainly have not offended, but I still get something out of me going over there. Mm -hmm. My time and money okay. and whatever. My first level of advice would be for you not to go right now. You're nowhere near ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, there's so much you can learn without. If you go, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Don't go right now. You need to go without your beads. Mm -hmm. And you need to go as someone who just wants to learn about a specific village. Mm -hmm. But you go where you know there's a priest at. You go and you pay your respects. You mm -hmm. don't ask for anything mm -hmm. at all. Spend some time there. You will probably have to go twice. Mm -hmm. The first time you go is when you're going to go and scope out who's cool. Mm -hmm. You can't get that. You can't get that and get lessons the first time. You got to just go and be there and go to the market and eat with everybody else and, and do that. And then you'll, you'll make a friend. Okay? Even if that friend is not in the tradition, that friend will be able to help you to get with people who are, who are credible. Uh -huh. Okay? Um, so I would say it has to happen in two trips. Okay. Minimal. That's Minimal. Fine. But the first trip, don't even mention it. Recon. Like if there's again, if there's a yeah, <laughs> this is exactly you're doing the cognizance. Mm -hmm. If there's a temple there, you go there. Hey, I just wanted to look. Oh, please, I wanted to meet you. No. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, maybe here's something with some cola nuts, mm -hmm. <coughs> just a few, <coughs> you know, um, and that's all. And they'll talk to you, you know, and you'll get a sense. But even now, it's not time for you to go there. 
I am mad at that. Okay. In the meantime, what's that meantime looking like? Well, what do you want to do in the meantime? You want to um, learn about the tradition? Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, you want to learn about the culture. Yeah, okay. The culture will teach you so much because that once you sense. start learning about the tradition, you just click. Right. Like that. So you can spend a year, honestly, just learning that culture. So also, by the time you get there, you'll be much more comfortable. Right. Don't go with, with the spiritual thing because mm -hmm. nobody... Let me shut up. Not that. A lot of people over there are not as spiritual as they purport themselves to be. Mm -hmm. A lot of these priests, they be pastors, Christian, they be imams. They're not even in the tradition. Mm -hmm. It's just grandfather taught mm -hmm. me how to do these things. So for a price, I'll teach you. So you want to go and you want to get cool with that particular space. And you don't have to support the village. Once they see that you're not going to support the village, they'll leave you alone. Right. Honestly. Now, if you want to go and you want to provide services in some sense, if it's through that particular shrine, then they may show you some favor. But the first time you go out, you don't even want to be having those conversations because that sets the precedence mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to do here. If anything, you might just want to go and posture yourself like you're looking to maybe buy a plot there. Mm -hmm. Just looking around, maybe I'm thinking of moving here and then get to know the people on that mm -hmm. one. But I, I, would, I wouldn't go any sooner than maybe 12 months. Go strong and do some ebos before you go. Work. So you come back. Okay. Else. So that's important. You come back just you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any more questions? I know we wanted some. I wanted to ask about the shining of the pineal gland. Yes, what? Right. How do you do? I mean, what do you do? Uh huh. <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So when Aladdin rubbed the lamp, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, or Aladdin, mm -hmm. right? He rubbed it, he found it in the dirt. Well, the genie comes out, which was smokeless fire and uh, plasma. And he says, you know, what do you want? Which is my command, right? Okay, now we know the lamp of God, as it tells us in the Book of Thomas, is, is in the forehead. So we know that's the pine, right? And shining it comes through incantation. Allah, Deen. Deen, even though it means to be in, like, concordance with Allah, Deen also means to speak. It means the word power of Ilah. Ilah means the peace of the one. So speaking the word power of the peace of the one um, activates pineal organ activity. Okay, that's how you actually polish it and shine it. Okay, through incantation. Um, now remember, incantation is a bit different than chanting. So when you're using incantation, what you're going to be doing is speaking to the various jinn, demons, spirits that reside in the pine tree. That's what. So you may want to give oh, some okay. information about what happens when you shine yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the demon. That's where your demons live. Oh. Okay. But they're waiting for you to control them. It's okay. Okay. But if you, if you, if you shine it and you worship them, then yeah, they take over. So we don't want to worship. Hmm. Worship, and okay, let me explain. I'm using the word worship because most people kind of know what worship means. But worship only means to ascribe attributes, attributes to. Mm -hmm. So if I sat and looked at you and described you, that would be worship. For instance, Allah the uh, Magnificent, mm -hmm. Allah the Benevolent, mm -hmm. uh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. These are forms of worship because I'm describing the characteristics, <laughs> the characteristics of a particular entity. Okay, that is by definition worship. Okay. So, in essence, you can you you would worship something to call it. Okay, so for instance, if I'm walking down the street and one of you saw me tomorrow and you said, "Hey, I'm not going to turn around," I never answer to that. I don't know what that's about. So I'm I'm moving. If you say, hey, brother, nah, not enough. Because I don't call everybody my brother. If you say, if I'm wearing a white shirt, you say, hey, you in a white shirt. You got my attention, but I'm still not turning around. You in a white shirt with a big, giant, shiny, bald head. <laughs> you might. You got my, definitely got my attention, 
but I need something else because I need to know what aspect of me you want. You the one with the white shirt, big shiny ball head that was teaching the class yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's up? I forgot my name, huh? But it's okay, you don't need my name if you know my attributes. Okay. But you can invoke different aspects of it. You might say something else, and now my fist are balled up. Maybe I'm scared. You just stole my parking spot. Uh oh. You know. Um, so that's what the basis of worship is. And incantation is somewhat similar in that you are um, declaring attributes, but incantation is more so it takes you through a pathway through a certain energy. Uh, I would suggest you, if you really want to learn about it, because incantation is very powerful, we don't do it much, but you want to check out Israel Regarding. And um, Israel Regarding has a very good book called The Garden of Pomegranates. It's, it's like a real big book. But uh, the garden. The Garden of Pomegranates. Okay. And um, you can learn a lot about it from that. He also had a book, I think, called The Tree of Life. He deals with the capitalistic systems real heavy. But um, that's where they stole all of our, those early Jewish mystics. They took all of the, the incantations out of the book of Coming Forth by Day. So you read that, you're getting all of um, Tehuti's incantations that he gave to Haru to empower him. Peru being a form of your first time. Any suggestions for folks um, once they start invoking or facing their demons? Once you face your demons, you don't really have to do anything because they dissipate. You know, the facing of a demon, remember your face is our tomb. Your face is the soul of this. So when I look at you, I shed sunlight into you. Now, demons and spirits can't live, and they only live in shadows. That's all spirits, it's even your ancestors. Ancestral realm is not this pretty bright place with a uh, uh, Photoshop filter of glow, gauging glow put on. Mm -hmm. It's dark. It's like the movie Insidious, if you've ever seen it. That's why you light candles, so they can see their way to you. So, when you shine light on them, they actually fade, unless you give them a space within your shadow, called a ka'et or the Ojiji, okay? So a demon, you can say, hey, get back in my shadow. I'll give you a spot to live, or I'm just gonna leave you. You know, it's like that, that exposure of truth. When you expose the truth, a lie to the light, what happens? It exposes itself to truth that's in the lie. You know, you lied about this, but now we know the truth because we've exposed it. So um, when your demons come up for you to deal with them, just by you, Exposing them and giving them the, your full attention, they're no longer demons anymore. Yeah. Now they're you. So you've transmuted. You've, tra you've transmutated it, but in that moment you have a choice. I'm going to be this, or I'm going to let you die out by not giving you any more energy. So you may bring up something, you may say, well, you know what, you got, um, I don't know, because I'm, I'm so good, I don't know. I haven't done anything. <laughs> Except for that candy. Big cup. Oh, yeah, the recent piece of big cup. So you might say, oh, man, you know, we got you on camera. We stole a piece of, piece of big cup. And in that moment, I may say, yeah, man, you know, sometimes when the line is too long and why, why, and I'm going to a lecture, I'm not waiting. So I'm, I'm going to get you. So what? Now, in that instance, I left it in the light and I've taken it on as part of my character. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or I might say, um, yeah, I did that, and I don't think I want to be that person to do that anymore. So I'm not going to empower that. No, that's, that's not me. I'm this person. And it, it dissipates because I'm not feeling it until I'm on a lady. Okay. And I'll be vibing. Anyone else? Anyone clear? Yes, sure. 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 Soul and spirit, right? Right. Now, um, as we, as we this is how you get that good knowledge. You got to work for it. As we people out there doing right, who are ancestors, right? Right. They're, they're, they've got their own soul, right? Your ancestors. Yes. Yes. Some. Hmm. Some. Okay, we can answer that. I don't want to mess your question, but I mean it's true. Well, okay, so okay, those who oh, those who do have a soul, right? Right. They're in the ancestral realm as spirits. 
if I'm something as a spiritual expression. No. No. All dead people. Okay, I'm using that word for a reason. <laughs> have spirit.